when we need to prepare for a competitive defense, our go-to company is the Army Painter. Thanks to their complete range of paints, spray cans, and gaming tools, we're able to complete our new armies and units in no time. When we need to elevate the quality of our models and terrain, the Army Painter is always our first choice. You may not know this, but the Army Painter has sponsored more competitive events than any other hobby company. Turner and Wargaming is in their DNA. Visit thearmypainter.com to learn more about their amazing products. And use promo code AWPaints for a 5% discount from your Army Painter purchases. What are you waiting for? Discover the best way to prepare your models for events with the Army Painter today. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Art of War tier list. I am super excited because we are drinking all the Chaos Demon data sheets, Jack. This is my favorite army in all of Warhammer, and now we're going to get to rank them. Fate Weavers in here. Listen, he who controls the schedule controls whether or not we do Demon data sheets. Look, I'm not going to lie. I've been controlling the schedule for years, and you know what? This is the first time we're doing the Demon data sheets. I don't know why it took so long. Well, they're cool. Something uh, people might not know is, I mean, they probably know that you're a demon boy, right? You've they been a demon know. boy for a long time. Um, but I used to play demons back in the day. Yeah. I used to, a long time ago. That's so true. Let's get some demony action back together. Sometimes you would say, you know, you couldn't see yourself playing anything besides demons. That sometimes that's true, and sometimes it's not. You okay. know, sometimes it's not. Very faintly. But my first, you. the first GT I won was with demons. That's right. So we're gonna rank every single data sheet in the demon codex. This is gonna be ranked on their competitive value. Um, so we're gonna think about like the context of how you could use them within different demon lists and in tournaments and things like that. Despite the fact that all demons are amazingly cool, some of them are still going to have to be banished to the warp for this one. Um, but that's not to say we don't love them. No, there are some of these we don't. We don't particularly love. If you're new here, we are a competitively focused Warhammer channel that tries to help you learn the game and become your best. If you're interested in Warhammer 40k and want to see more content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click like the video and leave a comment. It really helps us keep growing the channel. Absolutely. We appreciate all of you. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. We could not. And if you're interested in learning more awesome strategies and tactics about how to get better at Warhammer more specifically, you can check out our War Room along with tons of content on Chaos Demons. We do every single faction in the game as well as generic Warhammer strategies, tactics, tips, all that stuff. We have a three-day free trial going on right now, so if you click the link below, thewarroom.vhx.tv, you can access all of our content for free, and then you can see what it's all about. Absolutely. Well, speaking of what it's all about, you know what it's all about? It's, it's about demons. It's all about demons. It's all about demons. All right, put us in, Jack. Boop. We're going to start it off here, folks. So we've got five different categories. The first is going to be blessed by chaos. This is this is the, the people who are blessed. This is <clears throat> this is the best, the blessed. Um, yeah, this is just for those rock solid inclusions going in. Basically, they could go in basically any Chaos Demon army. They're just really good. They're just great. They're just great. You know what else is great? Gary Bartlett, who just gifted five Art of War 40k memberships. Thank you so much, Gary. <laughs> Appreciate your support. Thank you, including to himself. Hey, it looks like <laughs> <laughs> you better give himself <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yourself. <laughs> and welcome in, Gary. Glad to have you here. See, Gary is blessed by chaos, but right below that we have the valued servants. These are solid data sheets. These are going to be nothing wrong with them. Good to include. Maybe not auto takes, but just solid, solid. Just, just yeah. good. Just good. And then we've got the denizens of the warp. These are your bread and butter. These are going to be your troop choices and things like that. They're just, they're just solid. You know, make make up the backbone of your army. So, okay, so they're well, you know, it's whatever. Okay. So these are like mediocre. These are like all right. They, they are all right. They are. This is like the equivalent of B tier, you know. And then then we're getting down into what we've got the abominations of chaos. Now these these things could use some love. I don't know why GW hates on them so much, but hopefully they get a little bit better. And then finally, there is the last category of banished. You don't want to be banished. No, banished is bad. This banished is, is bad. <laughs> this is not just something that's not good, right? That's abomination of chaos. This is something that is like comically not yeah, good. Like, like just just start over, throw this in the trash. This can is back. something that's like skull altery, not Jack. Good. We would never. We would never. <laughs> so let's get this started off with everybody's favorite, the Bloodmaster. So the Bloodmaster is the Herald of Corn. He joins Bloodletters, and he has two abilities, in addition to being a little bit of a beat stick himself. A little bit of a beat well, stick? Not, not the beatiest of sticks, but he's a little beat stick. Okay. He'll kill some Space Marines. He'll kill, like, three Space Marines. <laughs> he might kill a few aggressors. He's damage three. Um, so anyway, with these Bloodletters, he's going to give them all plus one to wound, which is something they really, really enjoy. And he gives them six-inch consolidate. Okay. All right. So, I mean... Is there anything you can combine with a six-inch consolidate? Like you can get in, tag, make them bad 
I mean, like, theoretically, you can use the six-inch consolidate to tag more units, right? And with Scarbrand, you can trap people in close combat if they fail a battle shock test. There, there's weird synergies if they're not the most reliable there. And then, plus one wound is just great for making blood letters hit harder. And within the context of corn demons, you can start really getting up your strength, AP, and damage with Ren Masters, plus one hit from a Bloodthirster, plus one attack from Scarbrand. If you're going in on that package, the Blood, ma the Ren blood Master really definitely makes a, makes a slot. Yeah, I mean, the damage three is quite nice. Um, the fact that he is at least a little bit of a beat stick. Plus one to wound is huge. It's huge. I mean, they do have dev wounds, which means that's a little bit of a non bow but like both of them combine to kill your opponent better, so you're not sad about it. Yeah, you just need to kill people. Exactly. Especially if you're playing corn. Exactly. I think he is between a valued servant or a denizen of the warp. And I, I, the reason I'm not putting him in the higher category for sure is because you don't always take him at all. He, like, he, he only makes sense in specific builds that are very corn focused um, or as a tech piece here, but what do you think, Jack? A denizen of the warp or a valued servant? So I'm looking at him, right? He's and not that expensive either. How many points is he? He's 65. Okay. Uh, he's not bad. It really, I think it comes down to how much you want to actually take blood letters. Right. Um, and then Skull Taker, pro if, unless I'm mistaken, probably takes the first blood they're, letter they, unit. They're, they do different things. Skull Taker is a higher dev wound out, but better for killing characters. This is plus one wound, so you're going to rip all apart land readers and stuff with this unit. Okay. All right. With Red Masters and such buffing you. They both will find a place in a corn list, but obviously not every demon list is a corn list. And then on top of that, um, every demon list will have to consider assassination because you just your army's best data sheets are your characters largely. So in normal demon lists, he may not make the cut just because he's a fairly suicidal character. Uh, blood letters don't have dev wounds without skull tag. That's my mistake. Right. Um, I think he's pretty. Good, but it, like it comes down to how much you want to take ten man units of blood letters that are designed to hit things, right. and how often is that? I, I honestly don't it, know. It's, it, demons, a lot of playing demons is side grading yourself, so like you could take ten blood letters to hit things with a with a red blood master, but there's a lot of other things that can also hit stuff uh, throughout your codex. So it's just like which way do you want to tech it? I think he's a denizen of the warp. He's a I, solid pick. I would say, yeah. I, I would I would struggle to justify him at valued servant. Yeah, I don't I think he's not quite here, but he, he's good. If he's, you want to take him, sixty five points is not terrible. It's not bad. Honestly, the worst thing about him is four assassinate points he gives your opponent. That's that's it, yeah. But like a unit of uh, blood letters near Scarbrand for that extra attack. Getting into combat with plus one to wound, they do a lot of damage. Yeah. Especially if you point the little buff and be like, you're plus one strength, AP, and damage, or some nonsense. Right. So then we have one of my favorite data sheets, Jack. We actually have a lot of these data sheets. because they have chariot. They have a lot of chariots and demons, but this is the regular old Seeker Chariot. So I know most of you may not be well-versed in the nuances of the Seeker Chariot. Just I'm up. just going to have to trust you that the, that the chariots you tell me they are are the ones that they are. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. You know? so <laughs> the Seeker Chariot is the cheapest. It's basically just a skirmish piece. It does a modicum of attacks and does some mortals and dev wounds, but... You know, it's offense is not why we are taking it. The reason why we're taking it is because it's 65 points. It's reasonably tough. It's got seven wounds with toughness six and a four up and vulnerable safe. So it's, it does, it's not trivial to kill. And then it can move 14. It's weapons. It's got a gun. It's, it's a fairly useless gun, but it is assault and pistol, which means you can advance in action, get trapped in close combat, and then still stand there in action. Very nice for doing things like cleanse or deploy homers. It's a fairly decent sized base, which is a double edged sword. It's harder to hide, takes up more real estate, but it has better move blocking screening tool. And it's 65 points. It's 65 points, it scores secondaries, and it holds random objectives. OC3. OC3. I think this is another solid denizen of the warp. I don't hate this guy. I've included him in lists. He's just, he's solid. With how obsessed you've been with him in, like, in list building, I thought he'd be higher, but I, you've been like, I need to get some secret chariots in here, bro. I've heard that like 17 times. I have a soft spot for secret chariots because they're always terrible, and the fact they're playable now makes me really happy. But does that make them awesome? Only in my heart. All right. They're, they're definitely just a solid choice here. A lot of demons, I think, are going to fall into denizens of the warp, as they should. They are denizens of the warp. They feel a little more like other armies, like, somewhat interchangeable, right? Like, they don't necessarily have 
they, they're kind of like stats and how would you like your stats package? Yeah, right. Like which package of stats do you want your demons? Because all the demons' abilities and strats are kind of centered around getting to your opponent. So like what are you delivering when you're there? Exactly. We've got a $2 super chat from Liam DSL, your internet Liam provider. It says, kind of burying the lead, Matt Damon data sheet rank. Ah, Liam well, DSL, thank you so much for your super chat. Um, Matt, I, I don't know who that is, unfortunately. There's like several people it could be. There's a lot of things going on here, but don't you worry. We will we will get to all the rankings of the data sheets. Thank where where would Matt chat. Damon rank here? Uh, blessed by chaos, obviously. Obviously, clearly. Then we've got Seekers of Slanesh, another pet unit of mine. Very, yes. very favorite of that. You like units that move really fast, and then when they get where they want to go, don't do anything. I love moving it's, fast. It's like your favorite thing. <laughs> so, Seekers, how fast do they move? They move 14, they can advance and charge for 1 CP, and I believe they reroll charges innately, and they're plus 1 to charge for their instrument, and they scout move 9 inches. They roll advances and charges. They roll advances and charges. So they're going places. What do they do on there? Not much, but can they move block you? Absolutely. Those little ovular bases, fantastic for move blocks. They don't go through ruin walls, so that is a bit of a bummer. But one of my favorite plays with them, Jack, is the scat move on objectives. Go first, sticky them for one command point, and then just leave. Yeah, nine inch scout moves pretty good. I've done that with uh, with jackals, a six inch scout move on table quarters. You just get into the center, sticky, and walk back. Doing it with a nine inch move. That's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. In the context of pretty sick, it's not that sick, but it's it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. In the context of pretty sick, it's like I. Eat, but it's like <laughs> it's useful though. Um, I actually think these are another Denizen of the Warp. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, if you do, a lot of demons are gonna be a dozen of the Denizen of the Warp. Sure, Lord. I'm just happy that you're not like in like. Oh my god, they move so fast. Jack. Blessed I'm by like, chaos. They, no. <laughs> they have big movement characteristics. What do they do? Uh, they move. I'm trying to be reasonable here. They not only can they move, Jack, but you can three inch away deep strike in this army, which means they can be an amazing move block out of nowhere. They're also they have huge bases. Huge bases, like. They have very, very long bases, which they can just go whoop and yeah. just move Make block a and ring. Semicircle around your opponent's army. Watch them kill 80 points of yours and do nothing in their turn. It's awesome. Doesn't work against your highest level opponents, but you forget some factions are more vulnerable to it than others, and there's no avoiding it sometimes. Yeah. So we've got the my favorite of all data sheets in here. I know. And yeah, you, you know wanted, you wanted him early. You know where he's, he's going. He's going into Abomination of Chaos because that's where he belongs. Mr. Fate Weaver, Kairos Fate Weaver. Please, my dad, Mr. Fate Weaver. So he does a lot of unique things for your demon army, which no other data sheet can even pretend to do. One, <laughs> he's like your best source. Uh, I can of see the mind. machine just like spinning up and gearing up to be like, well, if you think about it, he's actually blessed by chaos. He is blessed by <laughs> chaos, Jack. All right, let's just go through. This. He does things no other data. She does. He does. He's got an indirect fire gun. It's actually good. We're not talking about Soul Grinders from Bombardment, and we're not talking about the Havoc Launchers on your Allied Chaos Knights. We're talking about Infernal Gateway. This is the hazardous version is six plot shots plus T3, average eight. I roll a nine, and then it's I blast. Know. It's blast. So you're really, depending on what you're shooting, getting It's like shots. 16. Your strength nine, next to your Lord of Change, your strength ten. You can your AP three base, which is great for an indirect fire gun. One CP makes you AP four. Guess what? Fate Weaver gets you CP refunds on your. I've Z watched you strats. roll. No, he does not. Yes, he does. So if no, you, you roll a one on turn stop one. Stop being a negative Nancy. This is my two. <laughs> so if you roll higher than the the number of battle round, which is like really easy on turn one and turn two, then you you just get your CP back on any Zine strats. He also has the vector ability to make opponent's battle tactic stratagems cost more. Depending on your opponent, like Tyranids or Space Marines with their armor contempt, battle tactic vecting that can be a game changer. AP is an issue for demons unless you're really leaning into corn, and even then a lot of this stuff is only AP2. You really want to not have them be a negative AP additional from armor of contempt. So he's a real problem solver for you in a lot of ways. So where do you think he goes? I think he is blessed by chaos. I fine. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't he in your list then, Why, Nick? What's he, up with that? I'm experimenting. Why don't you think he's blessed by chaos? He's just like inefficient compared to a lot of other options. I've watched several games where he just does flat nothing over the course of the entire game. He shoots indirect that hits on threes and wounds on threes most of the time. So that's a lot of the time that's like, here's like four saves for my big monster. <laughs> 
He, it depends what you're targeting. He definitely he suffers from the problem that indirect is a scalable thing where having a little bit of indirect is a good tool, but it's not going to change the dynamic of the game. You need a large quantity of indirect, like triple night spinners, to really scare your opponent into being like, crap, I cannot hide behind walls as a strategy. Now, um, to be clear, yeah. I'm not saying he's bad. Okay. I actually think I actually think Faye Weaver's good. I just I just want to tamp tamp. I understand. I just want to keep understand. him out of blessed by chaos, where he because he doesn't belong in there with you know the might of Seleski or whatever is going to end up in that, or the skull altar, whatever it's, ends up in know. blessed by chaos. I think he's good though. Like for two seventy, his profile is pretty decent. I, I don't disagree. I think he's quite a valued servant. His profile at two seventy is actually quite good. He got, he does do a lot of unique things for your army. Like Vect is real. CP regen is something that you can't otherwise access. An indirect fire gun is just good, you know. Yeah, there are some data sheets in the game. There's a lot of data sheets in the game where there's like they do a little bit of damage in shooting, a little bit of damage in combat. They have a little utility in this way and a little utility in that way. And sometimes those data sheets are like better than the sum of their parts. Yeah. And sometimes they are worse than the sum of their parts. Yeah. And somehow Fate Weaver is the worse than the sum of their parts variant. Fate where he's got he's he's tough as nails. He's really hard to kill. And he has a decent gun. And he has a decent ability. And somehow He's still pretty mediocre. Yeah. Not sure how that worked out, but uh, he's, he's like not bad, though. He's, he's good. He's solid. He's better than all these denizens of the warp. He's not yeah. a denizen. He's definitely better than those, and I honestly think I would include him. If I were writing a demon list, I would put him in to start. And yeah. then if he comes out, he comes out, but mm -hmm. I would put him in to start. I think that's very fair. So then we've got Blood Letters, one of our first mainstay troop units in the Demon Army. These go back and forth on how good they are based on how much investment level you're going to put into them. So your basic like 10-man Blood Letter unit, it started at 170 points, I think. It's down to 120, which finally makes it decent. Um, it's strength 5. What eight, were they? 170. It might have been 160, but it was, are you it was kidding? ridiculously <laughs> overcosted. Um, but it's down to a reasonable level, and then if you do things like add the Ren Master or add... Uh, Scarbrand or add the Skull Taker. These things really start to add up in terms of how much damage they can do. In the context of a corn centric list, you're going to be running these. They'll, these will feel like they're blessed by chaos with how much damage they're doing. But in the context of all the demons, you really need to go in the investment package. And part of the demon dynamic is that, go, like, you really want to take a lot of god units, like a lot of corn units, to get the corn synergies going, which is its own list as opposed to like all the different lists you could make. Yeah, probably without any kind of synergy, they, they their data sheet doesn't seem that amazing. Although for 120, they're they're not bad. It's an OC2 deep strike unit that actually hits in combat at the end of the day. And you're deliverable. You just need a CP to drop six inches away. Oh, no, you don't. You just need to have shadows. You need to have shadows, which which largely involves taking Bellicor. Um, but you know, I don't know. Where to put them? Yeah, because in the movement phase, you're not going to realistically have shadows in mid board until you go into your shooting phase. Um, yeah, I mean they they seem pretty good, right? There's there's nothing to point at and be like that is a problem for them. They're durable, but not crazy durable, right? For their points cost, right? They have an invulner toughness for annoying to deal with. Uh, their melee is pretty decent, but not insane. But if you buff it, it is insane. Yeah. I'd probably put them at Valued Servant, right? Valued Servant? Um, I, I think so. I think they're a Valued Servant as well. If you buff them, they do actually do ridiculous yeah. damage. And even at their, their worst day, they're a good OC2 troop choice that hits fairly hard. Yeah, they'll beat up basically everything else in their price bracket without really needing buffs, which is good. So I've got a $10 super chat from Zinth25 over here. Don't worry, Nick. We believe in your fate, Weaver. Jack is just being a meanie to your baby birdie boy. Thanks for the content. Thank you, Zinth25. I completely agree. You are absolutely right. I have been revealed. You have been revealed, Jack. Why are you like this? Oh. I, you know, for a while, actually, Fate Weaver uh, was, Fate Weaver like one or whatever, was my, my password. Uh, yeah. To a variety of things, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I just love the, the, I love that dude when I played him. So that means it's probably his password for a variety of things. Still, you might be able to hack some Jack Snacks accounts. You never know. God, I hope not. Maybe AOL.com. You know, Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> anything from like five years ago, <laughs> probably uh, six years ago. So Jack, you know what I've realized. And uh, unfortunately, we're live, so this is real. We're using the tier list that doesn't have the updated data sheets, so we have to like. 
do wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. I'll, I'll, I'll handle you this. You can handle this. Sorry, what, what do you mean the updated So digits? remember how we added Bellacore and we moved Rodigus and stuff around and mm -hmm. the extra secret chariots? They're not in the pictures is what I'm finding. So I want to make sure we hit Bellacore and those data sheets. I see. But it would be pretty easy to add. We have the picture safe. So all we have to do is just uh, show some files and oh, go. Oh, God. But maybe maybe, oh, God. maybe over there. Oh, no. <laughs> can you just all of this? I got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got. So Whew. there we go, folks. Crisis averted. Let's scroll up. All right. Oh, yep. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. You saw nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. There's Bellacor. Fate Weaver. We're and, just going to split these up. You know, nothing, God, nothing to see here. We're not going to talk about all three chariots back to back, please. Please, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Absolutely nothing happened. If there were if there were crisis, it would have been averted, but there wasn't a crisis, so we're fine. So anyway, demonettes. Demonettes are a lot like bloodletters in that they were a combat troop unit. They're OC2. They're pretty fast. They move nine, and, you know, they're infantry. That's pretty good. They are 110. They're slightly cheaper. Uh, they have devastating wounds, which is great. They have some weird, unreliable ways to access reroll wounds. Um, either you take a herald, which will never work timing-wise, unfortunately, or you will uh, use a strat which requires your opponent to be battle shocked. Which there's some ways you can do battle shock, but again, unreliable. I think they're they're very solid, especially if you run them in the context of a slanesh list, where demonettes are. They can get sustained hits very easily. They can get always strikes first if you add a transweaver. They can get an extra AP if you're near keepers, which you probably will be. The mask is an amazing synergistic tool within Slanesh because if you can select a unit within six of her. She's alone up in the fight phase. That unit is going to be minus one to wound all your Slanesh units. And if you're, all your Slanesh units are going to be plus one to wound against that. So that's a great way to get around the strength four nature. And Seleski makes them beat sticks with critical uh, wound fives for devastating fives. It feels like you definitely have to jump through a few more hoops than blood letters, right? Blood letters, you have a guy pointing the target and say, I don't like him. And then blood letters are like, yes, boss. And then they get in there and cut him up. Yeah. These uh, guys feel like you need to join him with a character and then stand him near a Lord of Change and then... Uh, uh, a Keeper of Secrets. Whatever, it's the same thing. How are you on the demon tier list? They need to stand near a Keeper and they need to have Shalaxi or Seleski and then they also need to use a strat and then like they kind of do as much damage. Whereas the blood letters are just like, see, si, senor, and then stab. I do like the one you knew demonettes with Seleski a lot. I think that's a great unit, but then it creates opportunity cost. So Seleski can either be doing that as a, as a pretty beat sticky unit, or she can be doing solo operational mischief in the backfield, which I do love even more. For that reason, the fact that the, the best way you can run demonettes in my mind is still opportunity cost. Um, I think they're just denizens of the warp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Slightly I, worse than blood letters. They are also um, significantly more fragile. Toughness three versus toughness four means that there's a wide variety of anti infantry weapons that are just really good into you, as opposed to blood letters. Blood letters get wounded on threes by strength six and fours by strength four, um, which is our big break points. Yeah, I definitely find the demonettes just evaporate instantaneously. Not that you were expecting them to stick around, but we're talking like the Rhino Storm Bolter kills three. Yeah, like, no, it's, it's not. It's, just bad. it's not. It's not good. Yeah, like a rhino could legitimately run up to you, shoot you with storm bolters, charge you, tank shock you, fight you in combat, and kill the whole unit. That's embarrassing. Yeah, especially if like the way that they just strap like out of heavy stubber, out of storm bolter, out of heavy bolter for like every tank now because weapons are free. Like that, those free weapons that don't have value as targets, they're just like extraneous. Love killing demonettes. Oh, they're big fans. Big fans. Um, it's so easy to just put a unit away without even trying. Yeah. Like you're not going to threat overload. Also, they move faster, but you're just going to deep strike on your opponent anyway. So, right. and then we've got the big bad Bellicor. You know he Belly is. B? He's a love hate relationship in my heart. Um, in that he charges things and then they he still, doesn't. They're still they're there. Still there. <laughs> um, he's for whatever reason you would think his profile is actually scary. But the profile is scary. Six attacks, like, lethal on. hits, strength fourteen, AP four, D six plus one. I hear you. I get it. I'm telling you what that actually means is against tough targets. He hits on twos with lethal hits. Four hits and already one wound, one of them's going to miss. And then you're wounding on threes often, so like one or two more of those wounds. Or like two or three more of those wounds. So now we're at like three, maybe four wounds. And then it's AP4. But everybody who's worth anything in this game has invulnerable saves, so just take two of those off of four up. So now we're doing 2d6 plus two damage. Okay, that sounds good. Average of nine. Wow, I didn't kill a tank. 
And you'd be shocked, like the how often that is to happen and, and all that. But that Velcor is not a damage dealing piece. He also has a sweep. It is damage one. It's damage one. But yeah, you know who has a better sweep than him? He everybody. Everybody. <laughs> He's got good things. Helbrecht. He's got good jacket out of here. He's Helbrecht is for the Black Templars data sheets. <laughs> so Bellacor has got um, a lot of good things going for him. He's got a decent gun. It's actually a good gun. It's 12 shots, strain 6, AP 3, and dead wounds, which, you know, that's just What's good. the damage? It's just damage one. Okay. Okay. It, well, I'm not saying it's killing Imperial Knights here. I'm saying it's a good gun. That Let's is set a good the gun. bar. That is and a good then, gun. And additionally, he is the way that your demon armies can be built around. He is absolutely a synergistic build around piece. He has one of three ores he chooses at the start of the battle round. One of them is at the start of your opponent's turn. They take battle shocks if they're within six, and they'll probably be within shadows for an additional minus one. It's okay. I use it occasionally. Another one I basically never use, which is that you can reroll battle shocks nearby Bellacor, and you'll be in shadow, so you're plus one, you heal. Which doesn't suck, but you got better stuff to do. And the one that you're actually going to pick is the anti shooting one. Enemy, it's low not, but for 18 inches for all your demon units within six inches of Bellacor. So you can deploy on the line with your big scary monsters, and your opponents cannot shoot you unless they go within 18, which coincidentally is going to be in, in the kill zone. Uh, yeah, you can advance and charge and get in there and do nine damage with Bellacor. Not only Left, that. Left, right, and center. Okay, I mean, I mean but you're delivering other demons too, which is cool. But not only that, is that that he is an aura of uh, the area within six inches of him counts as shadows of the warp, which is great for uh, all of your rules pretty much, going up and coming down, um, get doing the, the stratagems, a lot of them get better if you're within shadows, the relics, a lot of them get better if you're in shadows, and you get better leadership and heal when you take battle shocks within shadows. Which so, is cool. Which it happens more than you think. Yeah. What he really does is allow you to deep strike better as well, because if you're deep striking your unit wholly within shadows, you only have to show up six inches away from your enemy instead of nine, and then a lot of your units have icons and instruments too, so you can get five inch charges out of reserve, or even six is perfectly fine, just lay into somebody really good. You can do some tactics like deep strike Bellacore three inches away, get really close into the middle of your opponent's army, behind them even, then start deep striking bloodlighters and bloodthirsters and whatever you want back there and start charging, ripping people up, get some Shooting guns delivered into good spots. He's your build around piece. He's 350 points. He is. Yeah, you know, he he's more he's less of a big monster and more of a utility piece that comes stapled to a decent melee profile. Like he's not he's not a bloodthirster in combat, he's not Scarbrand, he's not Shalaxi, and he's he's decent in shooting, but he's not gonna blow people away in shooting. He's just like good. AP3 ignores covers, which is pretty solid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but really for his price, he's a utility piece. So you can't shoot me over 18. Something we've discovered in 10th edition uh, is that no shoot me at 12 is fantastic. No shoot me at 18 is alright. It's yeah, fine. It, I find one of the things that I dislike about Bellacor's long off ability is it's great for getting the game started. You can deploy more aggressively. You can force your opponent to come into engagement range of you. Engagement range being like, let's fight with our army's range. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to being shot from 48 inches away. But what he really... Once you are close to your opponent, which is like turn two... Um, what rule is that? You know, you're just getting shot. <laughs> yeah, well, then you switch to, if you're below starting strength, take a battle shot. Yeah, yeah he doesn't have a good right. backup, right. for sure. The, the other way you can use Bellacor, which I've actually started exploring, is a more control-centric way, where instead of you're trying to deliver a bunch of demons six inches away and get in the thick of your opponent by avoiding their shooting phase early, you just stay far away the entire game, be relatively unshootable the entire time, and just bounce around to areas of the board by picking up and coming down, picking on isolated units. And I think demons require a little bit of finesse in that regard. You, you're just not going to beat people in those stat checks. Yeah, you don't have the raw damage. I mean, even with the big big boys, you still run a little bit behind a raw power. Yeah. Um, but he is a fantastic utility piece, and I know that he started re-entering your lists even though he is a uh, I, suboptimal damage dealer, let's put it that way. Yeah, he's not notably tough. He's, he's like kind of fairly soft for 350 points. I'd expect a tougher amount profile, and his damage is lackluster. But for all of the utility he provides your army, I think he, he still belongs in Blessed by Chaos. I think he does. There's something that we, we haven't really touched on. It's the Shadows of Chaos, while great, is very tough to apply in the movement phase. Because you don't actually control an objective until the end of the movement phase. 
which means if you walk onto the midfield objectives, take them away, you don't actually get shadows up in midfield until the end of the phase, which means you can't drop reinforcements six inches away. Bellacore is the only real way to do that. He's the only you know way to get that ability in your army. So, bless my cast. He's a playmaker. Yeah. Could they design demons a little bit better in terms of rules? Maybe. But until they do, we've got Bellacor. Yes. You know what else we've got? What else do we... Oh, God. It's a second blessed by chaos immediately. The mainstay of all demon lists. This is a battle line unit, which has gotten two points changes and is still an auto-include. And they infiltrate, and they provide minus one to hit, and they do actions, and they move block, and they're 40 points, and they're amazing. Yeah, Nurglings are pretty wild, man. Like, they're just pretty, pretty wild. And you see them a lot, because CSM and Death Guard can take them, and they do. Um... And at 40 points for a deep striking unit that infiltrates and can do actions, it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you, you can get these guys to the spots they needed to go, and then they just score points and put them behind a wall. They are definitely not worth trading a combat unit for to kill, and then they, they're they just there. Also, the minus one to hit or why do they have that? Because it's better. It's better than they do. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay. A uh, couple of downsides. Not this is going to take them even remotely out of blessed by chaos. A <laughs> um, couple of downsides. They don't walk through walls. People assume that they do. They do not. They're That's swarms. True. They don't go through walls. They have to go around, which can sometimes be a big problem because they're not the fastest boys on the planet. The other problem with them is I'm not going to complain that they don't like fight or anything. They're 40 points for three models. Actually, Jack, in my latest stream game where I played Demons vs. Richard Siegler's Tau, you can catch it on, on the worm. Did they outfight Tau? They, with the help of Rodigus, who can give plus one damage to Nurgle units, took down a Devilfish because they just have lethal hits. I just rolled a few sixes. He rolled some ones and twos on saves and two damage. Nurglings. You killed it from full? That's impressive. I killed it from six, but okay. I, it's still six, <laughs> six damage from a tank from Nurglings. Like, what are we That's talking about? That's, That's a 40 true. point unit. That's true. The main downside for Nurglings is that they are OC zero. That's that's the main issue. Yeah. They are if they were OC one, I would take they would be months. one of the best units in I the entire game. Might take seventy two. Yeah, you you might <laughs> because as a skirmish unit, cheap skirmish unit going forward taking objectives, they would be huge. They can't cleanse an objective by themselves because they mm -hmm. don't control the objective. So they need someone else in that area to unlock uh, objectives for them. And if they're your only skirmish. Your opponent is going to have the objectives in midboard until you do something about them. But for 40 points, they're insane. Yeah. So that brings us to the Blue Horrors unit, which is not to be confused with the Pink Horrors unit. Clearly. Um, Blue Horrors are a little bit worse. They are OC1 and their leadership 8, which does kind of suck because as soon as, as you start taking battle stocks, you fail those. Yes. Um, their damage is anemic. But the reason you take them is because they infiltrate and they split a little bit. They split into brimstones on four ups and they infiltrate, which means you can start the game holding two objectives in no man's land um, by just spreading them out a little bit. You can sticky them for one CP if you want. You could be in your Fate Weaver, get that CP refunded. And you start the game with shadows in midfield already up. So it's, it's just a board control tool for early game. Yeah. They are, for me, and I've, I've built some demon lists. Mm -hmm. For me, they're too close to pink horrors in cost for me to be, like, happy running them. I get that they're different. They also like, provide an aura of minus one leadership. So you could, like, three inch away deep strike them, put a bunch of enemy units within six, and then, you know, minus one for this, minus one for shadows, and now you're starting to lose two leadership. Is I agree. They're definitely not trying to be anywhere close to the durability troop OC package that pink horrors are. They are... <laughs> Um, pretty much just a an infiltrating screening unit, and we're a faction that has nerglings, so like you don't need that. Yeah, I I don't really see a point behind blue horrors. I uh, I really think they need to be a little bit cheaper. I mean, they do control objectives in midboard early, which is nice. Mm -hmm. But man, I just want pinks instead I, of. Them. I just don't think they do enough. What is I, it like? Fifteen points to it's upgrade fifteen them to, points to upgrade them to uh, pinks. Uh, mm -hmm. They are different units. They are different units. But, like, pinks turn into them if you think about it. But you don't get the minus one leadership or, or the infiltrate. But, like, how much are you going to value minus one leadership and infiltrate when you consider that the pinks are just twice as many OC and better leadership? Yeah. I mean, inside every pink is, on average, one blue. So, like, you get ten pinks, and then you get the ten blues after them for 15 points. I would just... I just struggle to see why I would take blues. Yeah, I do too. I think I would take all the units in Denizens of the Warp before I take blue horrors. And for that reason, they are an abomination of chaos. Unfortunate, truly. I do like these things, though. I think they're, they're fighting their way into Denizens. They're trying. Pink horrors are Denizens, but we'll see. Yeah. 
Then we've got the Bloodthirster. Now I what? sense that we're going to have slightly different opinions on this one based <sighs> off of one game where it charged one night. That's true. That is true. That's true. That's true. Why don't you tell me what you think about the Bloodthirster? So I think the Bloodthirster is pretty decent. Sports of a decent melee profile. Um, hits pretty hard. Doesn't have rerolls. That's kind of demon life, and sometimes that that just that just sucks. But uh, pretty decent melee profile with seven attacks. It's strength sixteen, AP four, damage D six plus two. That's pretty solid. Does mortal wounds at the end of the fight phase, and uh, gets gives plus one to hit to nearby corn units. That buff is a little bit less impactful. That significantly less impactful than Scarbrand's buff mm -hmm. for plus one attack. But if you're going into mono corn, like screw it, why not? Uh, it does hit pretty hard. It's a decent deliverable out of shadows. What does uh, Argathic or Argathic King of Blades do for it? Well, all, like all the enhancements, you're going to have two effects, and the baseline is going to be plus one strength, plus one attack. And if you're within the realm of shadows, you're going to get plus D three strength, plus D three attacks. That is pretty good. It's Honestly, pretty good. that is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, it's shooting does negative damage. So it just it's not going to do anything. It's toughness eleven, which is a very nice place to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I found Caladius at toughness eleven is just a huge break point. Some weapons are strength ten, and mm -hmm. they they do not like going into uh, toughness eleven. Um, three twenty is a little expensive for me. And then it becomes three forty five with the relic, of course. Well, but then then it's worth it. Then it's worth it. So I think it's a little overpriced, but I still like what he brings to the table. He is one of your hardest hitting damage units, especially. Um, he's got a good sweep. He does good damage. What else he does is that he brings something to the table that can kill hard targets. The things I don't like about him are his cost, of course. His defense for cost is, is like marginally better than Bellacor's. His toughness is 11 versus 10, otherwise it's the same. And I just, you know, for the same reasons we think Bellacor is not a tough demon, he's not a tough demon, you know? Then, when you consider how expensive he is and he requires Bellacor for deliverability, I now have 700 points in two models with one gun, and one of them sucks at combat relative to his cost. So it's like, is this really a sustainable strategy? Is a question I have to ask. It's not really Bash Brothers. It's it's it's, it's two set two three hundred fifty point models come together to form one not seven hundred point model. Six ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you don't run him in the context of Bellacor, he's not going to get to apply his damage. He's going to have to like rapid ingress and try to charge, which might work, might not work. There's better units to try to do that with that are smaller profile. Maybe also corn greater demons. You know, maybe there's a better corn greater demon to rapid ingress and try and charge with. I think the only time I would ever consider running a bloodthirster, and I've tried this data sheet and it whiffs, so I can't be too anecdotal. Jack already called me out for it. Um, I did have this man whose only job in life is to hit hard targets, charge into an Imperial Might, and not kill it, which is like grounds for firing. <laughs> then how much damage did it do? Like six. It was. Yeah, it was like an embarrassing. It was like amount. this is literally why you make the army list and you just don't do it. So not to do it with consistency, I should say. And then you know, still vulnerable to the still vulnerable to the invulnerable save. Like everybody can just spike fours because it's a relatively low quantity of attacks. I think in a monocorn list where he's not only being this combat monster, he's also providing plus one to hit. That's where I would take him. Um, I don't think I'd take him in any sort of mixed demon list. There's just better, greater demons you could access. So for that, I think he's a denizen of the warp. I, I can agree with that. I wish his buff buffed himself in any respect. Plus one to hit on a guy who hits on twos matters like 2% of the time. You know, if your opponent has minus one to hit and then you wouldn't have killed them otherwise, I wish his buff was like a reroll ones to hit aura and then he would reroll his ones to hit and that'd be dope. Yeah. Which brings us to the Keeper of Secrets. I guess we're going through a lot of the big, big monsters now. I'll break this up a little. We'll get some interesting monsters as we go through. Uh, we'll do the Keeper of Secrets. The Keeper of Secrets is a Slanesh monster. She's come down quite a few times in points. She's started at 330 now. She's 290. Uh, yeah, I know. It, it makes you think that you should probably take him, but let's, let's go through what she does. She's got a total of 10 attacks. Six of them are with her main attacks and th four of them for the claws. They're going to be a mixture of Strength 6 and Strength 8. So we're not really great at punching tanks with this stuff, but they're all damage three, so it's going to be great at slaughtering like elite infantry. That's really where she shines. She's minus one to hit all the times, and you're going to give her a shining avis just for a five of feeling pain. So she's definitely one of the toughest monsters we can access. Yeah, yeah. She's also got a decent con. 
She, uh, yeah, Phantasmagoria. It's, a, it's all right. It's it's not as good as Bellacor's. It, it's probably one of the worst for the monsters, but it's wildly better than the garbage gun the Bloodthirster brings to the table. He doesn't even have a gun. <laughs> he yells at you. <laughs> He's like, ah, and then maybe one of your guys falls over. She does provide an aura of plus one AP to Slanesh demons within six, which is nice. It takes demonettes to AP3, takes fiends to AP3. Those That's that's a solid amount of AP. It takes all of her attacks to AP3 as well, which is pretty good. Yeah, um... Strength 6 and Strength 8 is really lackluster. You can give her the Wit Stealer Sword, which, assuming you're within shadows, will heal you in close combat for every enemy model you kill on a 3+. plus. If you're not within shadows, it'll be a 4+. plus. One wound per death on a 4+. plus. It's not bad if you're like playing against Gene Stealer Cole and you're slaughtering 9 dudes a turn and reviving when you feel a pain. It can be quite the bear to bring her down. Not every army is fragile. You play her into like custodies where her elite infantry killing will be really good. And then she might be okay, but she's not really gonna get much value out of that wit stealer. No, no, she's she's not going to. But like I don't think she needs to go back to full every turn for it to be a problem. If she just gains one or two wounds every it can be annoying. turn, and it can be really annoying. From the, from the battle shock potentially passing. Exactly. Like she goes down to eight, passes a battle shock, goes to ten, charges in, kills four guys, heals three, goes to thirteen, has a five but feel no pain. All of a sudden your opponent went from, I can kill that, to I can't kill that. And then she heals a little bit more, and then, you know, it's just annoying. And if it affects her living versus dying, it's super worth it. I think my issue with the Keeper is just her damage output. Um, not being able to really crack tanks with any reliability is just something I can't accept from a 300 point model. You, you don't want Rhinos to run up and give you a big hug? You literally, a Rhino drives into a Keeper, you wound it on fives, it survives, and then it's like, I can't fall back, I can't go up and down, I have to shoot into close combat to try to kill this thing, if I don't I'm stuck here through my whole turn. I can't, I can't live like that. Unlike Canoptic Court, where when you run a Rhino forward to try and tag them, they at least can reactive move and try and run away from your transport. Yeah. <laughs> they, they can't do that in Demons. I don't think she's an abomination of chaos. She's not, like, bad. She's just not good. I think she... She's tough. She's really she's tough. She's really she's tough. She's really tough. And it is the kind of data sheet that gets better in multiples, I'll be honest with you. Like, just having a bunch of very like super tough, tough monsters. Yeah, you yeah. take, like... Like legitimately, three keepers and Shalaxi is a is a build concept. It's a build concept, and yeah. it's I think it's a good one personally. Mm -hmm. um, it's tough as nails. It isn't cheap, but your opponent is not chewing through that with any reasonable it, speed. It is thirteen fifty for those four models. Oh, only thirteen fifty. That means you're at seventeen hundred with Bellacor, and then you add in a bunch of trash, and that's your list. Well, that's Jack's list. Um, that's I your list. I, Sorry. I think this is between an abomination and it doesn't work. It doesn't make my list for whatever that's worth. I'll be. Uh, I believe it's better than several of the things we have in Denizens. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, I, I think it's it's better than a bloodthirster. So if we're gonna put a bloodthirster there, then I think you can go there. But I, I do not think it's a valiant servant. I don't no, I, I, I I'm not trying to argue up to that. We'll put this in the pile of slanesh things. Right fair, fair enough. Where it belongs. Well, well, you know, let's put let's let's do a little god centricity over there. Well, corn is better than slanesh. Everyone knows that. But um, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. I think corn is a better mono play style than slanesh. Yes, I would much. If I were to play demons, I would. Play uh, triple run masters, eighteen blood crushers. We know. You know. <laughs> I don't think they know. <laughs> I think they know now. Scarbrand and a bloodthirster. Let's go. Uh, unfortunately, the next data sheet wants to be in that mono corn party yeah, we're talking about. He doesn't end up in but there. He doesn't end up in there. So skull master. Yeah, he masters them. Skulls. He masters them. <laughs> he's basically two blood crushers glued together, but he's only one model. Um, That's he's, unfortunate. He's a character, so I remember that assassinate problem. And then he's not that great. He has some damage three in close combat, which is nice. And he, you know, that will help increase the effectiveness of your blood crushers killing capabilities. And the blood crushers also, their mounts, their juggernauts, all get dev wounds. They four attacks each. I hit on fours. That's not bad. Damage one, though. Damage one, though. Damage one. They hit on, yeah. Fours. It's a little deceptive because, like, a unit of six blood crushers plus him, if they all get to fight, is like 28 attacks, only 14 hit. Um, of the Juggernaut mounts, and that's like two dead wounds. So that's like a not very valuable role. No, I played Harold Deathwolf, who is almost the exact same model, because um, he gives Thunderwolf cavalry mounts dev wounds. Yeah. And that comes up 
Never. Never. Uh, I've just I've rolled it out several times. It's never mattered, and I'm like sick. Right. So the other thing he does is your blood crushers with these big bases, nice six man unit, seven man with this guy. They can multi charge a lot of different units, and then they all have to take battle shocks on the charge. If you fail a battle shock, it has a lot of interesting ramifications. One, you'll take D three mortal wounds, assuming you're in shadows. Two, your battle shock no strats, and three, there's a demon stratagem which is real wounds against the battle shock unit in close combat. Oh, which is the idea, but again, it's very unreliable. And the idea of also getting a multi charge off with a seven man crusher unit is a little awkward because they have worse coherency. And I'm telling you, I've played with this unit. They don't blitz through walls. Their bases are chongus big, and they are they thunder cav bases. No, they're like an oval, but they're a re- it's a really big oval. It's bigger than squig hogs. It's like it's a big oval. It's a it's a it's a squig oval. It, yeah, it's it, big. It's not a fun to play with oval. I am I am sorry. <laughs> so like I, for that reason, I think they are. Well, this isn't Blood Crushers. This is Skull Skull Master. I think the Skull Master is an abomination. Okay, that's fair enough. I I think his his rules don't do what that unit needs them to do. No, I, his I, rules need to either make that unit hit harder or make the unit more durable. And instead, they're like, well, you might do a dev wound, and um, yeah, you have two dev wounds if everybody attacks, and if they pass the battle shock, which is completely out of your control, then you've just added a one hundred point character to your unit. A hundred points might be one of five. Yeah, so he's not, he's, he's an abomination. Ew, he's 100. <laughs> he's 100. He's, he's not banished, you know, he's trying, but he's he's an abomination. He's not in comically bad, he's just in bad. We're not taking this bad. Yeah. But you know who else might be comically bad? The Feculent Naruma? Feculent Naruma. What, if anything, does this thing do, Nick? It infiltrates, which is a thing. God bless him. It provides cover. If you're physically obscured to your demon army with no armor saves. It gives cover to demons, yeah, okay. And I believe, you know, I don't, I don't want to misquote you. It's been a minute since I read this thing. I want to make sure I get this right. There's some data sheets in the game where you read it, and then two seconds later you're like... You just can't remember You're it. just like, what was that? It was useless. Like, how did I read this? I also want to make sure I get its cost right, because that's going to be a big factor. Mm-hmm. So, um, it, the units... Within six of it have stealth, um, which is not bad. It has to deploy in your deployment zone, so it can't be in like midboard, right? It no, it, it does infiltrate. It does infiltrate. It does infiltrate. Okay, your so, opponent can kill it. But then it is also a hundred points. So it does, it's OC zero, right? It's OC zero. Yeah, it's kind of tough to kill. <laughs> it's not it's nine demons. nine wounds. It just. You're banished. You literally are providing cover to the demon army. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, stealth is not nothing. There's a better way to get it. 100 points is ridiculous, and it, it can't move or do anything or hold objectives or contribute to the battle at all. It also exists, and demons have a lot of big, based, big, annoying models to move, and you're going to move block yourself more than your opponent. Sick. Yeah. Not what you want. What you might want, though, is some pink cars for all the reasons you don't want blue cars. They're OC, too. They deep strike. They split. They kind of very annoying to kill for certain things and, like, long objectives. And when you get D3 of them back when you pass a battle shock check, it's misery for your opponent. That's true, too. That's true. Because even if you're, like, down just the blues and brims after a variety of splits, you pass a battle shock, and then, oh, I have three more pinks, which continue the split train. Yes. That and, unit, I played uh, a bunch in ninth edition, actually. I played a bunch of Zinch Demons in ninth. And pink cars are basically the same data sheet now, and they were miserable for my opponents to deal with. Like, they would shoot, and they would put a real shooting activation, a real gung-ho shooting activation, and they would kill, like, six. Yeah. And then eight blue horrors would spring out of their corpse and go... And then the opponent's like, all right, cool. And they fire another unit. And I'm like, cool, that's another two blue horrors. And they fire another, and another, and another, and another. By the end of the turn, I'm like, wow, you really winged that unit. Like, it's almost dead. You almost got it. I really think that the pink horrors are like a solid do-nothing troop unit. But because they're an expensive 140 do-nothing troop unit, I just don't think... I value them that highly. They, they go glom an objective and last for as long as you can. Yeah, it used to be in ninth edition that you could protect characters with them. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you could have a big, like I had 40 or 50 of the pinks just in mid-board strung standing out doing weird stuff. Characters. Standing in front of characters who would do the actual work. And so my opponent had to shoot pinks as their primary game plan. 
that does not exist anymore. If they have any way to reduce your OC or just out contest you despite your your OC twenty unit, um, you know, they can be like Admech, for example. It, then it's literally a worthless unit. But that, those are rare niche circumstances, and if your opponent does have put the firepower or the combat into just one shot the unit, it's probably a bit of an overcommit which you can use to your advantage. But I, I think getting real value out of pinks where they're just like glomming objectives and making your opponent's life hell is a little bit of a romantic size scenario. And for that, I think it's denizens of the warp. I, I think it is. Now, there are some scenarios. I, if your opponent has to shoot them and they're holding an objective, their life legitimately is miserable. Yeah. Like, it's not fun. If they're shooting them with, like, weapons that don't kill them. But like, killing them instantly, killing them from full to dead is, is hard. It like, is. It's it, not... You get to put 20 saves on the unit mathematically. Yeah, and then you can still spike. You can still use a CP reroll on the end to keep them alive. And if you've killed nine, it's pain. <laughs> it's pain they if you kill nine. They are also a little vulnerable, though, to the same way you can spike up on saves and then survive to then try to trigger your splits. You roll bad on your splits, and it's just like a four-man unit now. Yeah, it, it is. Um, what I've noticed is like you spike up on four ups, you spike down on four ups, and like the unit's kind of annoying to kill. Yeah. The downside, one hundred percent, as you said, is that they don't really like do anything. Like zero offense. The time I think you might actually want these potentially is in thousand suns. Because yeah. you might just want a big ball of durable OC to slam on an objective mm -hmm. and just say, bring out real guns to deal with this because Magnus is waiting. But you know, this is a demon. This is a demon tier list. Demon tier list. Demon tier list. Oh, no, not there. Into Denizens of the Warped. Okay. I have a soft spot in my heart for pinks, though. I know you do. Much like the Blood Crushers. But you know who no one has a soft spot for? The Skull Altar? No, that's. Uh, it also. Gives cover to demons. It does, because demons are an army that really values the cover save. And not only that, but they also value plus or rerolling battle shock tests. Because if you reroll and you pass, you you know you heal D3 wounds for a hundred points. And it has to sit in your deployment zone. And it's a six in Torah. Be gone with you. It's awful. It's so bad. <laughs> this is worse than the normal mob by like a significant amount. If I I could make a new tier for like extra banish. <laughs> the, the fact that it's the same price as a normal mob is actually insulting because the Narwhal is like... It's trying to do something. Yeah. It's just not worth it. To like the top of the chart, the Narwhal is the same distance as the Narwhal to the Skull Altar almost. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. Um, um, so we've got the Narwhal, not the Narwhal, we got the Plague Bearers. The Plague Bearers are another solid chip chewing. They make objective sticky. They are kind of tough to kill. Their toughness 5, 5 have been 2 wounds. Um, that is annoying to kill. Some armies or some data sheets will just spike them out of existence. Like you get shot by a unit of bolter inceptors coming in with damage two in mass with sustained hits, and you're like, this is very painful. But you know, you shoot one damage at this stuff, you shoot a grenade at this thing, and it's like this is horrible. Yes. Um, I don't think they do anything offensively. You can add characters to them, you can pretend to make them damage two, you can give them real wounds. Even with all of that, they will still not amount to anything, and you are jumping through a lot of hoops offensively. So they are just another sit there and glom an objective unit. To me, them and horrors are very similar in role, functionality, and durability. They're just weirdly tough against different types of profiles. I think the Plague Bears are 30 points cheaper, and that is solid. Yeah, they're 30 points they're cheaper? They're 30 points cheaper. Okay, I think that gets them up to Valued Servant, personally. You think that gets them a Valued Servant? They don't do anything. They just stand there. You, you do need somebody in this army to just sit there and be OC on objective. Somebody does have to do that job, and at 110, they are the best unit for that job. I, they make almost every demon list right, just one unit to 10. Now, I think there's big diminishing returns here. 30, 40, 50 Plague Bears. It's not the type of stat you're going to get away with spamming. But 10 to stand on your home field, maybe steal an opponent's objective mid game, quite nice. Yeah, and they, I mean, at least when you shoot them and charge them with something, like throw a grenade, shoot and charge with scouts or something, you're going to make progress that doesn't immediately disappear like Pink's does. But it's going to take forever. It is, yeah. yeah. Skull Taker is a pretty badass character. He is strain 6, AP 3, and 3 damage, and of course you can buff that up with the Ren Master, which we'll get to, um, and plus one attack from Scarman, plus one a hit from Bloodthirster. He gives his unit of Bloodletters devastating wounds, and Bloodletters naturally reroll ones to wound, reroll all wounds if they're fighting a unit below half strength, which doesn't happen often, or of course there's the one CP strat to reroll wounds against a battle shot unit. I do love rules that only trigger against you, like help you kill units that are already almost dead. Yeah, it's, it's like getting a buff exclusively against people in nursing homes. Demons have a frustrating amount of conditional rules that are just like so hard to trigger. Um, but that said, he is a beat stick himself. He is better at killing characters. Um, he has precision built in. Um, 
He's really good, um, especially for his points cost. Again, I think you're only really going to run him if you're running the blood letters and the whole package and all that stuff. Um, but even just slotting in Skullmaster, Skulltaker, and 10 blood letters into a mixed demon army without going for the full nine yards of corn is still really valuable. Yeah, I, he also like legitimately hits quite hard. Strength 6, AP 3, damage 3 is a great substrate to put the plus 1 strength attack and damage on. <laughs> Or strength AP and damage. Yeah. I think he, if we're going to put Blood Letters and Valued Servants, I think you know adding a little character there to make them hit a lot harder is pretty good. Also, Skulltaker is my favorite character in Demons. Mm -hmm. I literally have owned that model like three times because I'll pick it up even when I'm not playing Demons because I just like the model and I'm like, I'm not playing Demons. I should get rid of this. Yeah. And then I warp fire it and then I pick it up again and then I warp fire it again. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a cycle. It's a cycle. Of violence. So then we've got the three Screamers of Zinch. Screamers are pretty exciting. Um, they're another little skirmish squad in my mind. They're 75 points for three, 150 for six. They have three attacks each, so nine attacks from a squad. Strength six, AP two, two damage. They do hit on fours, though. Um, they do fly over mortals. If they move 14, if one of them flies over your unit in the movement phase with a normal move, you roll a dice for every model in the unit. On a four plus, they'll take a mortal. On a six man, that can sort of do some damage. And they are beasts, so they can just move through walls, move 14 straight through a wall. That is pretty good. How many points are they? 75 for three, three wounds of the four up and vulnerable save. Yeah, they're offensively something to be desired for sure. Um, but like a unit running around doing secondaries, two units running around doing secondaries yeah. is decent. You are exactly spoiled, you know, I mean, you you are kind of spoiled for choice, sorry, on units that run around and don't do anything in demons. Yeah. So, like, it's going to compete with that a lot. So, when we're talking, I totally agree with that. There's a lot of, like, the Seeker Chariot and the Seekers are literally just data sheets you take to move 14 and do an action and move block somebody. So, it's really competing with those ones. And I don't think it's substantially better than any of them. I think it's just, you know, slightly <laughs> different. It's a little bit faster because it moves 14 through walls and flies, which is nice. Um... And it's a little bit cheaper, so in that sense, I think it is a little bit better. But for Seekers, you get five models on big oval bases instead of three on flyer bases. The Seeker Chariot's a little bit tougher, sort of. It feels very side grady to me. Yeah, and I think it lands in that tier. Yeah, we're going to break it up a little. All right. So then we've got the Lord of Change, which I think is one of your best... It is literally your best gun in this faction. Yep. Um, Lord of Change, with the Everstate specifically, is nine shots... Strength, 10 to 12 based on, or potentially 10 to 13 based on shadows. And then it's AP2, which you can 1 CP up to AP3, get a refund for Fate Weaver potentially. He's also got the Rod of Sorcery, which is another 6 shots at only 12 inches. The Everstaff also gives him an extra bit of range to help him get to 24 inch range, which is really nice. It and gives him, well, he's 24 base. So, what is the, the oh, that's Kyra's Fate, Fate Weaver, yeah. that's Fate Weaver. Yeah. So not questioning the Demon Master over uh, here. Imagine. Imagine. Does it give him, oh, it gives him plus three and then plus six. Yes. Plus three inches, not in shadows, plus six inches within shadows to all of his guns. So his Rod of Sorcery is normally 12 and the staff uh, is, is 18, so they become 15 and 21 or 18 and 24 respectively. Chances are this guy is going to be in shadows because he's a damage dealer at range, so he, it's easy to tow him into your deployment zone, shoot 24 pretty far, do stuff like like that he actually rips apart transports at range and like real real durable units like he'll like six you can give him within. plus one AP you can plus one AP you can make him worse cover um, strength 12 up to strength 13 potentially he can he can do some damage I think he is between a valued servant and blessed by chaos he's up there I think honestly he's the first um, he's the first monster that goes in my list when I write a, a demon list mm -hmm. and he's not gonna leave yeah like I think he's just blessed by chaos I don't include him in all of my lists. I've recently considered dropping him because um, he doesn't. It's kind of like Fate Weaver, where it doesn't add up fast enough with your shooting. But he is great. Like that's not his fault. He's also like pretty dirt cheap for what he does. Yeah. Like we're not talking a three hundred and fifty point model. We're talking like a two. How many points is the ever stave? Twenty five. So twenty five. Two eighty five. Two eighty five for a demon who's pretty durable. Doesn't do zero damage in combat, but does a lot of damage in shooting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I quite like him. I think he's great. Yeah. You know what else is pretty interesting? The Changeling. He's gone up to 90 points, and you don't see him as often as you used to, but he's still got a pretty solid flamer. He's still a lone op. He still has two abilities that want that troll your opponent endlessly. The first one is picking an enemy unit in the shooting phase when 12. You roll a dice, and if you just happen to roll six, they're not shooting. And if you roll a two through five, they're minus one to hit, which isn't bad. 
And when anybody targets the changeling, they have to take a battle shock test, which triggers all of your demon rules if they fail. And uh, if they fail it, not only are they battle shocked, probably taking D3 mortals, but they also just don't get to target him. It is hilarious. He's hilarious. So I had, can I tell like a very brief story? Let's do it. So I had an opponent run up to me with orcs. This was, <laughs> and he runs up with me with orcs because he wants to take my objective away with a 10 man orc boy unit. So he charges me and then I'm like, Cool, all right, you charge me, take your battle shock check. He took it, became battle shock, so it was still my objective on my turn, and ten orc boys just stood around picking their nose as he just fell back, and I <laughs> blew them all up because I was playing Thousand Suns. That's amazing. <laughs> so he's like hilariously trolly. Honestly, 90 points on another assassinate character is why I don't always include him, but he is so good. He is ridiculous. Just to get through the hoops of having to actually apply damage to him, you have to get within 12. They have to not roll a 6. You have to pass a battle shock check, and then he's still stealthy, I believe, with, he's his, stealthy. with five wounds and a four up invuln. So once you get through all of those hoops, okay. then you get to put damage on him, and it's not even guaranteed to kill him. Have fun with that. He's great. He's, uh, he's just hilarious. In pure demons, I think you take him all the time. In Thousand Suns, one of the reasons I like pink horrors in Thousand Suns is because it gets you the goddamn changeling. I think the only thing I don't like about him is he does kind of compete with all of these random units for, like, what is changeling going to do? He's going to push a button for an action. He's going to stand in a quarter for engage, something like that. You have an abundance of units to do that job. So, like, having a loan up do it is not much better. And he's assassinate, which is an actual problem. As you can see, five of our eight best units are characters right now. Well, I wonder where you're going to put the uh, disc herald. <laughs> um, I think you could make a real argument for not auto-including him. But he is fantastic value. He also has a ridiculous gun. His gun is hilariously good. He's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like 613 ignores... 6, two, three. six, six two d 3 6 two d 3 Sorry, my bad. I have shot with it multiple times. <laughs> At... Ignore his cover, six, D6 plus three shots. He's like half a redeemer. Yeah, I think literally assassinate and, and just. Can, the can I put my favorite boy up in. You can do it. I'll allow you. In Bless by Chaos. 6 2 D3. He's, he's good. He's good. Your opponent, no one's saying he's bad. <laughs> your opponent runs two units of war spiders nearby. One of them gets overwatched off the board. The other one fails a battle shock check and sits there picking its nose as he blasts them again. Oh <laughs> you know what else is pretty cool? Red with this five pound super check. Hey Nick, thanks for being a hero. Five euro, but yeah. Thanks for being a hero and doing the what's the play content. You have done a great job. Jack is also cool. Custodes brothers and thanks. Custodes. Yeah, so we have this brand new series in the worm called What's the Play? Imagine like a chess puzzle, but for Warhammer. So if you want to check out that, you know, like here's a board state, what do you do? I give you the answer, but you can pause and figure it out yourself. It's a really cool, fun, interactive video content piece. We're releasing it every single week. We've just released the first one. It's for beginners, but they scale in difficulty. We're going to go all the way up to like Warhammer Grandmaster level. It's going to be super exciting. So definitely check out your three-day free trial in the link below, thewarroom.vhx.tv, and do, do the thing. Thank you so much, Red Rum. Thank you so much. Okay. So then we've got the Spoilpox Scrivener. The Spoilpox Scrivener is one of those demon units that doesn't really, doesn't really help the cause so much. He gives you an extra OC on your Plague Bears, which is kind of nice. The, the OC on the Plague Bears is going up to OC3. Um, How many points is he to, to do that? He's in the 70s, 80s, and he's another assassin. He doesn't do anything else. Isn't really. the reason we like the Plague Bears because they're cheap? Yeah, yeah. So then he makes your Plague Bears expensive. He also gives them sustained hits, but remember how I said damage is, a, is an illusion when it comes to those things. Yeah, yeah. He, he turns your damage from zero to point one. In the very, very niche scenario where you actually need to be OC30 because you're contesting some midfield objective, the reality is your opponent is just going to kill you. Or they're going to three-inch screen the objective. This isn't real. This is this is not a real... It sounds really real. I went down the rabbit hole of OC90 on 30 Plague Bears. But you know what? That list got banished. I, I would agree with that. He's not as banished as a Skull Alter. But he's close. He's close. He's close. He better watch himself. 
<laughs> flamers. I think he looks cool. That might that might make you him can put him up to yeah. up to uh, above above the feculent normal. Yeah, he's got a cool mouth. Yeah, he's got a big mouth. Ah. And a scroll. We like scrolls. Yeah, scrolls. We're a big fan of scrolls. Yeah. Oh, he's only sixty five. He, he's gone down. Okay, but but right. you know, one seventy five for my play bears to sit in my backfield and not really contest midfield effectively is not worth it. What if you want to do one unsaved win instead of zero unsaved wins? Then I could spend less points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like Flamers. Flamers are a good unit. They fell deeply into the category of all the other 65 to 80 point demon units that move 12-ish inches and do an action and screen and have a decent save and are moderately tough to kill. Their damage output is slightly less anemic than most of their option competitors. They have a Flamer, it's 12 inches, and Strength 4, AP 1, 1 damage ignores cover, which sounds pretty bad. It's good for killing Warp Spiders and Seraphim and things of that nature. 1 CP goes up to AP 2, at that point you're actually kind of credible. And then if you're near the Lord of Change, which isn't hard to set up, you're up to Strength 5. Strength 5, AP 2 ignores cover is actually a decent profile. It's not that hard to stand near a Lord of Change, spending the strat is optional, you might get refunded. They're also nice for deep striking three inches away and like melting ten cultists off of a backfield. Yeah, they're pretty good at that. I, I think that the plus one AP strat is going to be better on different targets. It kind of depends. Once you get to AP two and ignores cover, um, you might be putting a lot of two up invul- two up units onto a four up invul. So having it, you know, going to AP three or four often doesn't matter. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. Yeah. But it, you know, contextually, certainly is the case. I think these are better. Than screamers and seekers and all that stuff. I think they're a valued servant. I quite like the flamers. Yeah, they also fall back and shoot, which means they can fall back in action, which means you can't shut them up, and they're kind of tough to kill. Yeah, they're kind of tough to kill, and they don't have, like, they're not like seekers where they literally don't do anything, yeah. or screamers where they basically don't do anything. The flamers are a good skirmish war winner, and that is important. Yeah, that's a real job. I think they're up here. I think they're up here with the Lord Change because you take them together. <laughs> um, so then we have the Hellflare, Flayer, not to be confused with the Secret Chariot. I know, I know. I, I, or the I'm Exalted Secret for, Chariot or the Torment Breaker on Taking a word for it, chariot. my man. Like. Um, the Hell Flayer is the damage dealing chariot, which is an oxymoron. It is. <laughs> the what? <laughs> it is 105 points instead of 65 for the same defensive profile as the Secret Chariot. So we're talking seven wounds, four up in Bull Tuffin Six. The difference is it has more attacks. Are you sure they're four up in Bull? Yeah, they're four up in Bull. I'm sure. Okay. And, and they have OC3, which is also a good stat. But they. It does charge mortal. So when you charge into an enemy unit, you're going to roll a dice on a two plus, they'll take D three mortals, and I think on a five or six they'll take three mortals. It's not a great charge mortals. Uh, it's alright. It might be D3 plus three on a six or something like that, but it's just... That would be at, a lot. At 105 points, I just don't want to take this. Okay, thing. this is... Alright, it's a decent charge mortal. Actually, it's pretty good. Sorry. Let's go through it. So, you roll a die. On a two through a three, they take D3. On a four through a five, they take three. On a six, they take D3 plus three. And if you charged infantry, you add two to that result. Okay, so it's it's decent for charging infantry. That's what it is. And it's a combat attack. It's got a lot of combat but attacks that have dev wounds as well. Um, when I say a lot, I mean a lot for one model. It's still like eight, so you're still fishing for sixes and you're going to get like one. Um, so It better do its damage off the mortal impact because it it's not really doing it off its melee attacks. When I look at a secret chariot, I don't think I want to pay 40 more points to charge an infantry squad and maybe do some mortal wounds to it. You can. Oh, it is 40 more points. But it is 40 more points. Like, it is 105, and I just don't like it at 105. It's also not impact mortals. It's when they're selected to fight. So your opponent could, like, theoretically interrupt or something? Or your opponent charge, or, like, you charge, your opponent interrupts or something, or, like... I, I suppose when you're selected to fight is not... It's not really a distinction, but it, 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 the important thing is you had to have charged that turn, I would say. For the impact mortals? For the impact but mortals. But like the... when you're selected to fight, you can just kind of do it turn after turn after turn. Is it not when you're selected to fight in a turn that which you charged? Nope. Oh, okay. So... It's just each time they're selected to fight, you pick an enemy unit and roll a die. It, so that's not as bad, I guess. Your opponent could charge you, you survive, and then you do it. I think it's saving itself from Banished. I think it's going to the Abominations of Chaos. Yeah, I mean, you can take it in units of two, which does not let you use that ability twice. Y- yeah, you <laughs> can take all the Chariots, uh, the Hellflare and the Seeker in units of two, and really, really put 12 Chariots on the board and watch as you can't move them. Yes. Um, 105 is just not what I'm willing to pay. No. No, no, no. The defense would have needed to increase from the secret chariot for me to entertain that. Yeah, or the offense needs to be real other than the the 
mortals. So then we have Sloppy Bile Piper, who is one of my favorite characters in Warhammer. I know. He's 55 points. He can join play bears and give them re- re-roll advances and charges, or plus one advance and charge. Some, Either way. Some movement buff that like does not matter. The thing he does for your army, which sort of technically does matter, is in both fight phases, yours and your opponents, at the start, your enemy units within six will have to take a battle shock test, which you now will trigger every single demon roll if they fail. You do love your random auras of have to take battle if shocks. If you throw enough battle shocks at your opponent, statistically they should fail. It's every so the start of the fight phase, every enemy unit other than monsters and vehicles within six has to take a battle shock check. And he's cheap, it's fifty-five and it points. Is plus one to move, re-roll advances. Yes. Okay. So I honestly think that movement buffer play bears is like totally irrelevant. They're gonna deep strike or stand there regardless. The battle shock thing has the potential to actually swing games. The consistency of it is absolutely not there. But he's cheap, and for the fact that he's cheap, I kind of think he's just an abomination to chaos. I, I think so. I thought you were gonna put him up in denizens. I think abomination is perfectly reasonable. Uh, fight phase battle shocks are not really a great timing for this army. Like ordinarily, fight phase battle shocks are I'm gonna battle shock you, and then my massive damage is gonna go through whatever strats you have. Well, I, actually, though, it is a good time because you have one CP reroll wounds in the fight phase if you're fighting a battle shock unit. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So that's, that's true. I think that's one of the best timing synergies in. Forgot, the, I forgot in you have that strat. Yeah, no, that is good. Um, yeah, but and that'll that'll trigger nicely with like demon who love your wounds or skull taker blood letters who love your wounds. It also triggers when somebody charges you. Yeah, it triggers now, in both players' fight phases. So. I don't want to argue my way into you being like, wait a minute. <laughs> No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think he is definitely an abomination. I think he's better than the rest of those, though. I'm okay. put him at the top. Okay, he's a top of the abominations. I like Slopty Bile Piper. Who doesn't? Um, the Demon Prince on foot. So this guy is expensive. He's in the 200 range. Um, he is like every other Demon Prince. Um, but the demon Chaos Demon Demon Princes get a little buff that the other Heretic Astartes and Thousand Sons and whatnot don't. Based on your mark, you're going to get uh, an ability. So if you're Mark of Corn, you're going to get plus, I believe it's two strength. If you're Mark of Nurgle, you will get... Um, plus, plus three shots to your gun. That's for Zinch. That's, oh, sorry, I, I heard Zinch. Nope. So for, for Zinch, it's plus three shots to your gun, which will turn into a six-shot heavy bolter. For Nurgle, it's plus one toughness, which mm-hmm. will bump you up to plus toughness 10. Slanesh is going to be plus two move, getting you up to move 12 on this bad boy. And then uh, Corn is going to be plus two strength, which makes him actually strength 10. Yeah, one note, uh, Nurgle will take him up to toughness 11. He's oh, toughness 10 base. Toughness 11. So the real reason to take this guy is a six-inch aura of stealth for your army. Minus one to hit from shooting, which is actually quite decent. Um, 200 is a lot of points to pay. He's an okay monster himself. He is bring it down and assassinate in one model, much like every other big monster you take. But you do have to be careful. Because if your army is just big monsters, all of a sudden that's a viable strategy for your opponent. And you're not great at tabling your opponent with demons. So, you know, if yep. you're giving up bringing down an assassin, your opponent might just get it. They He can activate a three-up in Voln once per game for a phase. He's decently tough for a phase, for sure. Um, he's a little slow, but, you know, demons are pretty deliverable, so I'm not too concerned with that. I think he's a decent choice. He's a denizen of the warp in my I mind. Think he's a denizen. Yeah. The stealth or is legitimately annoying on a bunch of big monsters. I'll put him at the front of denizens. I think he's better than the thirster. Okay. For sure. He's also pretty decent at taking any of the enhancements if you don't want to go into a greater demon with that enhancement. Right. Like him with um, yeah, any of the enhancements really other than like the Everstave or whatever. Right. He's not bad. Mr. Scary B, the hardest hitting of all the hard hitters. Yes, he do be hitting hard. So hard he tried to hit corn. That did not end well. He's got a massive two damage sweep for a ton of attacks. He's got uh, nine attacks because, of course, he'll give all corn demon units within six, including himself, plus one attack. At flat damage six, strength a ton, AP four, could be AP five. And then, if you really want, you can add run master buffs, which would affect that sweep profile to get yourself up to like damage three, damage four sweeps. He doesn't ask how tough you are. He does need to get himself out of the territory being AP one, though. Yeah. So the run master helps with that. You have a lot of ways to increase your impeding corn demons. Red Masters, each time you apply the buff is plus one, and the strat is plus one. Yeah, that is true. But him going into combat with one Red Master buff, and then maybe the strat, is a brutal amount of damage. Yeah, absolutely. He is sort of tough. He's about as tough as a Bloodthirster. He's 20 wounds. He's toughness 11 with a 4-up invul. So, like, he's certainly not unkillable. He's but he does have a 4-up save, so if he stands behind the Skull Altar, he'll have a 3-up. That's that's what you wanted. Yeah, hell yeah. Stand, stand behind good. the Skull Altar. <laughs> 
Um, he's a little hard to deliver because he doesn't fly, so he's very vulnerable to being screen charged, but whatever you charge does die. And he's got an amazing aura for Mono Corn, which is plus one attack, and he traps units in close combat if they fail. Gets that a battle shock. Make him take it. Make um, him, they have to take a leadership. They're not. They're uh, not. They don't become battle shocked. Uh, also, he doesn't apply his buff to himself, unfortunately. Well, I apologize. Um, he is an auto include in a corn list, and he's a decent pick in a non corn list. Yeah, he is brutal in combat, especially if you. Uh, he's all right in combat normally for a big monster, but when you apply a the. The skull marker, like the I don't like that one, please kill that guy buff off the Ren Master. He brutalizes people. Yeah, I, I think because he's not in literally all the demon lists, he's if you build around it corn style typically, I think we're just gonna put him in a valued servant category. But he's a pretty good valued servant. He also gets better when he's almost dead. He gets plus That's two true. attacks. He gets angrier. <laughs> he does not get minus one to hit, he just gets plus two attacks. And your opponent's like, oh no. Don't don't miss on killing him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he walks up to you with ten attacks now, just spinning his axe. Yeah. Let's... He's a little got a bit of the trades downsies problem, which is also part of the way not putting in blessed by K. Chaos. Oftentimes he'll come in, be screened a little bit, annihilate a screen, and then be rebuttaled upon, and then he dies, and then you're like, what was that for 300 points? But he takes the heat off of something else, too. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's he got Angron Syndrome, where Angron usually dies pretty early, but he buys the rest of your army a lot of breathing room. Yeah. Unlike Angron, he does not come back to life. Also not a four year to hit Aura. Also, <laughs> there's, there's several reasons he's not Angron. But uh, he's also 305, which is 110 points cheaper than Angron. Definitely afford him. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's cheap skis. You know what else is really cheap skis? Soul Grinders, which I think are low-key some of the best added models in the game for their cost. These things are Toughness 12. They're 4-up Invul. They might be Toughness 11, but they're 4-up they're Invul. I think they're Toughness 11. They go to Toughness 12 if you if you take the... Uh, no, the Nurgle no, just, doesn't give them that. Nurgle no, just gives them a different weapon. The different marks will all give them different guns. So the Nurgle gives them like an indirect fire gun, which kind of sucks. It's like seven, strength 7, AP 1, and 2 damage. Not that many shots. Yep. The Zinch gun's pretty good. It's 48 inches. This thing is goes up to high strength, uh, potentially 12 if you're near your Lord of Change. 13. 13 if you're near your yeah. Lord of Change. Um, AP2 is a little soft, and then it's good D6 plus 2 damage. D3 shots. It's unreliable, but like it's a strong profile. Um, the corn one is like a heavy flamer, and the Slanesh one is a 9 shot strength 6 dev wound attack. Other way around. It's 6 shot strength 9. Ah, so many demons. But it has the same, so that's not bad. Yeah. Um, I personally like them in Zinch, but whatever mark you run, you're really running them for their defensive profile and their combat profile. In combat, they hit very hard. Five attacks with the, the claw, strength 16, good AP, and D6 plus one question mark damage. Uh, and there's and a strength 16 tank shock. So oh, the, the, the melee weapon? The melee weapons. Yeah, yeah, it's D6 plus 2 even. Yeah. Five attacks, it's 16, 3, D6 plus 2. Yeah, so it, it's got good damage, good shooting, good defense. 195. 190. 190. 190. Cheap, cheap as chips these days. So Yeah, they're dirt cheap, very durable, has pretty good offense. Why is this going in Valued Servant, Nick? The reason this is not going to be a Blessed by Chaos is because Crabman, big. Crabman, hard to move. Crabman, hard to deliver. Depending on your tournament or local store FAQ, whatever rules you abide by, he comes with a base for Age of Sigmar. You might have to put him on a base for 40k. Now, the World Team Championship says you don't have to this year. And it's very know, nice of them. It's very nice of them. It makes them a lot more playable. <laughs> the base is enormous. The base is like unplayably enormous. It's like seven inches in diameter. It's absurd. It's I think six, I measured it because I was thinking about doing this last edition. It is six point three or somewhere in that vicinity. And that specifically matters because the deep strike next to Bellacore, wholly within six inches, you can't do it. Your base is too big. You can't. You can't be bigger than six inches if you're looking to deep strike wholly within six inches. So then he's often deep striking. Honestly, with the three-inch waist strat, which is high opportunity cost because someone else wants to use that for something else, probably. He can walk at the table if there's no terrain in his way, but there is because this is 40k in 2024. And then, you know, that's just a problem. If you're not playing with the base and you get to play with the legs, obviously you're a little bit succumbed to how you glued your model together, but generally the profile is a little more 
long and, and spiky. It's weird. But you can you can finagle him a little bit easier. Right? My personal models do not come on a base, and you know it's not impossible to move them around. But moving them around is certainly a challenge, and getting them into combat with the thing you want is a challenge. Getting them blocked is super real, and for that, they are just valued service. Something also happens is you deep strike six away, and you still have to make a nine-inch charge because you still have to go like around a ruin that's yeah. in your way. Because there will always be a ruin in your way. <laughs> They're just these things are so big. Honestly, you walk them to an objective, and you put them into park, and anything that tries to come near you, hopefully, you can charge it. <laughs> yes, and when they make a normal or advanced move, they move over terrains less than four inches. A lot of terrain is more than four inches, and that does not mean when you make a charge move, just when you make a normal or advance. Yeah. Um, so then we've got the five flesh hounds over here. Um, you could also take them and use ten. This is straight into the pile of cheap demon trash. 70 points, moves through walls, moves 12, anemic damage unless you go through the corn route of buffing the crap but out of it. But if you do go the corn route of buffing the crap out of it, then anything hurt very can hit bad. hard. Then yes. They, yes. Um, I think these are one of your best skirmishers because they are on the cheaper end of your options and they move through walls. And if you're running any corn stuff, they do just tangentially get better. Um, if we're going to talk about any of the garbage trash units making it up into Valiant Servants, I think it's the flesh hound. You, you think they do? I, I think of all of them, they belong up there with the corn package. All right, let's go. All right, great and clean one. The great and clean one, Mr. Chongus. I love this model. I used to hate this thing, but I love him now. Is he 230? He's 230, but, but he's, he's, he's not. He's, he's really 260. He's 260, but he has a four at Film of Pain, so let's go. Woo! So his ability is six of Femal Pain for nearby Nurgle units, which is nice, whatever. They have a lot of wounds, it's value. But uh, the real thing is you give him the Relic um, for four of Femal Pain, five up if you're not in Shadows, four up if you are, you will be in Shadows. That is your job with this man. You start in Shadows in your deployment zone, you move to an objective, you spend one CP, you make the objective sticky and the area around his Shadows, and then he parks you know, on that objective for the rest of his game. And anything that comes near him probably dies, actually. He's not like... Useless in combat, and the fact that he activates every turn because he doesn't die means he does add up. I've had him kill land raiders, I've had him kill land forts, I've had him kill infantry. The dude does not not kill things with given enough time, and he does real shooting damage. He's like actually quite good. Yeah, yeah, like he's just for 260. He's just impossible to put away quickly. And if you throw little stuff into him, he's perfectly capable of defending himself against that. And if you throw real attacks into him, then you're wasting your time. Yeah. Um, I've had him die. I'm not going to pretend he's literally unkillable, but he's so unkillable to the point that he's died like one to two times out of like 50 games. Um, I think he's blessed by chaos. He's really that good. All right, go for it. In to the pile, I think he's of your best demon options, greater demon options. I think he's better than the Lord of Change. But, okay. you know, they do very different things. Let's talk a little Seleski action. Seleski's another banger. She's awesome. Um, she can join demonettes and then give them critical fives with her dev wounds. And, Jack, correct me if I'm wrong, but that means you can wound, like, land raiders on fives now, right? I believe so, yes. yes I, I, so. I believe that it lets you wound, like, big, high toughness stuff like monoliths on fives still. And then with dev wounds, you can now, that's a real credible thing. And guess what? One CP reroll wounds if they're battle shocked. Yep, yep. Perhaps you can, you can do that. <laughs> you do a decent amount of damage. I like Seleski most on her own, on mm -hmm. their own. That's the other way to use her. Yeah. She's real good like that. Uh, she's just an efficient stat line. 120 for a monster that is tough, hits pretty hard, and again is tough, and then <laughs> on top of that just comes back to life. She has a 2d6 shot flamer, which is strain 6, AP2, ignores cover, and dev wounds. She has 12 attacks in close combat. Six of them are kind of sucked. They're strength 4, AP 1, 1 damage is the rider on top. But herself is pretty good. Six attacks, strength 7, AP, th AP 2, 3 damage flat. Um, of course, you can spend command points to increase that AP there. And she comes back to life. Yes, that's, that's awesome. It's ridiculous. And the worst thing about her is she's at nine wounds, top new six four pinball for 120 points. She, I, I, is she's awesome. She makes like every demon list start right. The worst thing about her is that she's two characters because she comes back to life for the purposes of bringing it down and assassinate, which she gives up both of. So as you can see, our blessed by chaos area is getting pretty character heavy. But that's okay. It's okay. Assassinate is a real problem for demons, and bring it down is sometimes a real problem for what demons. What if you just don't worry about it? I've tried it. it. You can get it off, but it is, you know, giving your opponent 
35 to 37 secondaries without effort is a tough hill to climb. It's not not fun. Because, <laughs> of course, they'll take deploy homers, and that's free. Um, so then they've got the, let's do the exalted uh, secret chariot. This is where it starts to change, Jack. This is where the exalted chariots get bigger. Ooh, it's where you're buying two kits and more one. powerful. This is this is where you buy like twenty secret chariots to complete your uh, to complete your kit. Oh yeah. So the exalted secret chariot goes up to twelve wounds with its four bull. It's got more attacks. It's got like fourteen attacks with devastating wounds, which still is like two devastating wounds. Yeah, it's not ideal. And it has OC five. Guess how much it costs. Take a stab, why don't you? Take a oh, consideration. Is this gonna is this gonna be something where I'm sad that it costs too much or it costs too little? I'm gonna say 160. Not that much, not that much. A meager 140 for basically no damage, but a fast moving tw- toughness seven, toughness six, twelve wound five, OC five thing. That's uh, not ideal. No, it's just really. It was nuts. a little too close to my ludicrously high points cost. Yeah, I think it's literally worse than the health player. Um, That's. Listen, at least you're only wasting 100 know. points it, with the health player. I don't want either of them, and that's okay. That's fair enough, yeah. So we have the Demon Prince with wings. The Prince. Not to be confused with the Demon Prince on foot. That's true. What does he do? He, just like the Demon Prince on foot, changes his offense or changes his profile a little bit based on what Marky is. Um, I also love him as Corn because his data sheet ability, instead of giving stealth to all nearby demons, is just hit harder. It's a simple Jack style hit harder. I listen, you're speaking my language right now, my dude. Once per game, plus three attacks. So now this man swings in with nine attacks, strength eight, AP two, three damage. Let's make him mark a corn. Nine attacks, strength ten, AP two, three damage. Let's add Ren Masters and Stratagems and Skull Taker in the corn package. Let's add Argath, the King of Blades, plus D3 strength, plus D3 attacks. Let's make his sweep profile starting at 14 attacks, AP 2, and damage 3 for just two run masters. He is unbelievably synergistic in your corn army and hits so, so, so hard. I don't think I'd consider him in any other mark because his natural data sheet ability is literally hit harder, so I want to just lean into that. But he's awesome at hitting harder. He also gets lethal, precision, or sustained every time he fights. He sure does. And all three of those are good in different scenarios. So awesome uh, flexibility there. Apparently the Exalted Seeker is 115. And the character is oh, 140. I got confused. He's yeah. How did you confuse the two identical I'm looking I'm models? I'm sorry, isn't it? I confused my exalted chariot with my torment bringer. At 115, I like it a little bit more. Okay. I think it, it'll go over here at 115. But the torment bringer. It's still expensive for like a do nothing piece. Yes. Um, back to the demon prince. He hits super hard. He hits super hard in corn. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, he doesn't seem that amazing. It seems all right. He's really good as a solo piece. Um, he's really good, and by solo piece, I mean like in a mixed demon army with Argath, King of Blades. He doesn't need the whole corn package to just hit super hard. He does bring it down, assassinate, like every other good data sheet in this codex. So for that reason, I think he's just a valued servant. Okay, go for it. In the in the corn. He's, he's also probably package. only synergistic really in corn. Yeah, I don't think he does that much else. Um, so then we have the... Fate Skimmer, which is the Herald of Zinch on a chariot. This thing can join Screamers to turn like a six-man Screamer unit functionally into an eight-man Screamer unit because there's two Screamers pulling the thing. It is got the attack combat profile of two Screamers, so, you know, six attacks, strength six, AP two, two damage. And it'll give that six-man Screamer unit, now an eight-man Screamer unit, lethal hits. So they can actually start to do something with that strength six, AP two, potentially AP three, two damage profile. It's got a... Kind of mediocre gun, but it does have dev wounds and D3 damage, so if you roll some sixes, it can start adding up. And it can, once per game, pick the unit up and put it into Deep Strike, which you can do that with strats, but now you don't have to. You can do that in additionally to your units that you're picking up strats with. It's kind of nice. The question I'm going to ask you is, do you, do you want to, though? I don't want the assassinate that this man gives up for all the reasons that I've mentioned about assassinate. I have a question for you, though. Yeah. His unit is beasts, and they can go through walls. Surely that means he can't, too, right? No, he doesn't have that beast keyword. Oh, that sucks. He's got to go around the wall while the screamers move through it, which is not the end of the world, but it's not ideal. 
He's a little, he's, not, he's cheap. He's 105. That's not cheap, man. <laughs> oh, he's an abomination, isn't he? Yeah, he's an abomination. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, he's not great. But you know, he's not an, exalt, an abomination. The Exalted Flamer. The what does the Exalted Flamer do? He's got two different profiles, three shots, strength nine, AP three, three damage. So a little three shot mini gun right there. Three damage gun. It's more cover. Or he's got 2d6 shots, strength 5, AP2, ignores cover. If he hits AP, you... AP1. AP1. Um, it's a little bit worse there. But you can, of course, buff it like all things else. And if you're near your order change, that's going to go up to strength 6 for the flamer and strength 10 for the gun, which is actually a nice break point. Yeah, strength 10 on an anti-tank weapon is, is, is a good place to be. He's kind of tough. He's toughness 4, 6 wounds with a 4-up interval. If he joins your flamer unit... They're going to get advance and shoot to complement advance, uh, fall back and shoot and make up for their move nine profile. Helps that a little bit. He makes it a little bit tougher. He's a character, which does kind of suck, but I think he's generally a good shooting unit. Like three shots, strength 10, AP, three, three damage, and cover is, is a good thing for 65 points. Yeah, 65 points. I was just checking the points cost on him. Yeah, he is. he's not a bad shooting profile for 65. Yeah, um, at 65, I, I've run these things as solo, just like they're a unit, and, and that's the style list where I just don't care about assassinate anymore. And you just become desensitized. Yeah. You're just like, I don't care anymore. You know, at some point, we have 15 characters in your bust by chaos and value sermons thing. You just take all of them. Yeah. Um, in that context, he's not bad. I think specifically in that context, he's pretty good. But in a list where you're concerned with assassinate, he doesn't make the cut because he's just not in the top few characters. I think he's a valuable servant. I would say that. He seems... Uh, that's up one. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I meant to say I think he's a denizen of the warp. Okay. Yeah. Do you he think he's a value tournament? I don't really want to invest in flamers that much, but if you do, like if you're running a lot of Zinch, which you, you can. probably shouldn't, <laughs> um, but if you are, then I think you take him. I, I think he's quite good if you're running a lot of Zinch, but because you shouldn't do that, I think right. Denizens of the Warp is fine. Right. We have a super chat here from Shackleton Mangrum, member for 22 months at the War Room Bronze. It says, hey, y'all, might be GMing a crusade campaign for my local soon. Where should I look for interesting and interactive mission design for custom stuff? That is a really interesting question. Thank you for your super chat, Shackleton Mangrum. I, Where do you look for all your uh, crusade rules, Nick? I'm a creative individual. I would open up the rule book for the crusades and see, use that as a template, and then just make some stuff up. Because crusade is all about telling a narrative and forging your own path and stuff. So I would literally just be like... Here's my rules. Shackleton, by the way, is the guy who made me and John play two different games of Crusade. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Shackleton. The second one was after we explicitly told Nick and Siegs never again. But it happened again. <laughs> gotta keep the customers happy. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta. Speaking of keeping the customers happy, GW be keeping me happy with the Burning Cherry down to 115. I love this guy. So it's very similar to the... Fate Skimmer, and that it's pulled by two chair scre screamers. It is a chariot, so it's not giving up bring it downs or assassinates, which I like. It's not a character. This is basically if you take an exalted flamer and you put it on top of three two screamers and make it a model, and somehow it loses the character keyword, which is great. That is awesome. Um, it doesn't join units, but to make up for that, if it hits you with its gun, you are it, the rest of your army is going to ignore its cover into the target, which is really nice for Mr. Lord Change, Mr. Fate Leaver. Yeah, no, I, I think it's just good. It's a pretty tough unit. It's toughness eight with a four bendel and eight wounds, nine wounds, nine wounds. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan. Honestly, I think this is a valued servant. I think yeah. he's like right around here. I I enjoy these every time I bring them on the table. Great. So we've got the Beast of Nurgle, which is a popular choice for I have absolutely no idea reason why. These have seven wounds. Um, they heal if you back to full at the end of a phase if you don't one shot them. They're Toughness 9, which is pretty impressive, with a 5 Binvel. Um, they, they don't do anything. They have uh, Dev Wounds with 6 attacks that hit on 4s and are 2 damage. So, like, you have a 50-50 shot of doing 2 Devastating Wounds every time they attack. Um, they're 70 points. They're kind of slow, but they can Deep Strike, of course. Talk about your your mid range filler content for the demon army. Like if you want to just, just put it into slap the pile it right in there of that stuff. You know, like literally, you can deep strike this thing, and then it can try to deploy a teleport homer and be annoying to kill. God, there are so many, so many demon units that like don't really do anything, but are kind of a little bit annoying to kill, but kind of don't do anything. Talk about units that don't do anything. We've got the but score secondaries. 
105 points for the badass Gold Cannon, and this guy is basically two blood letters riding a gun. Um, so the combat is that of two blood letters, not anything to ride home about. It shoots you with a D6 plus two shotgun, hits on threes. It's strength 8, AP 1, and 2 damage, which is, like, perfectly mediocre. And then, if you're hit by it, take a battle shot, Jack. That's it? That's it. That's... What do you mean that's it? My whole army's going to get reroll wounds for one command point if you fail it. That is annoying. I don't like that. You could take How three. How many points is 105. it? You could just take three and just shoot them at stuff and just, like, do that. But remember, that is 315 points. They might still pass their battle shocks. They do require line of sight, and their damage is nothing. But they're kind of tough to kill. Yeah. They need to come down to like eighty for me to think about them. I mean, in a mono corn build, that's not—they're not terrible. Activating real wounds is sick. Is that the only way you can get the real wound strat to do anything? Well, you have to. They have to be battle. You shot. have to be battle shot. There are like a hundred ways you can cause a battle shock in demons. This is the one of the ways you can shoot your target and do it. Um, I don't think it's good. No, I don't think so. Even in a mono mono corn build, I'm not enthused. I, I just I can't spend this kind of money to call, to make them take a battle shock test if I can see them. Yeah, it's you're spending 105 points to make them roll two dice, and if they roll bad, then you're happy, and if they roll good, then you're sad. Yeah, and that's not amazing. Yeah, and then like it's all it's even if you line it up like. When and it matters, right? Like, because you're playing this army that actually does hit stuff in close combat if you're doing corn, and then you're probably going to kill it regardless. You don't need reroll wounds. Like, what target are you trying to kill where you need reroll wounds and they feel a battle shock? That's so niche. Yeah. Um, not less niche is the Blue Scribes. He is generic loan op man number one. But he's cheap. 75 points, moves 12, six wounds before up interval, and he does a cheeky mortal wound thing if you're within six of him at the end of the movement phase. He is aggressively fine, and a lot of armies would love to run him. Demons are a little lot of spoiled for choice in terms of, like, do an action kind of guy. Move fast and do an action kind of guy. But he is he's cheap. He's a character. He moves quick. Character's bad. Character's, Char bad character's scary. I understand that. No, I get it. I get it. I think in the context of demons, this guy doesn't actually make the cut in any of my list, but that's not because he's bad. It's just because I have this job covered so hard. Um, yeah. I think he's a denizen of the warp. You think so? I mean, you could put him higher, but he's not going to make any lists. He was higher uh, in Chaos Knight and uh, Thousand Sons, for sure. Right, where they want that job. Where they want that, where they need that job. Yeah. But the problem is now you have to take pinks. I have to take pink horrors to ally him. That's not really worth it, because then he's no longer cheap. I mean, you could make an argument that Thousand Sons want pink horrors for other reasons, and they want blue scribes for other reasons, and then it's just a 200-point thing you're allying in. Sure, fine, whatever. But, yeah, 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 You know, if we're talking about him, he's just so redundant. Like, yeah. so redundant. If, in the list where I truly don't care about assassinate, he might make it in. Yeah, but that's what it takes. Uh -huh. All right, let's talk about somebody we've, uh, let's say, we've talked about several times in the past. Okay, this man makes it happen for a quarter of your army. Let me just, let me just... Single-handedly creating an archetype. He literally one rules change. I don't think he's the top of the top, but I think he's he's up there. He's been blessed. The the Red Master on Skull Throne is in himself a pretty good character. He's toughness nine. He's nine wounds. He's a four pinball. He hits pretty hard. He rerolls wounds versus character and monster units. Um, he buffs an enemy unit, or debuffs an enemy, buffs your army by debuffing an enemy. You select an enemy unit within 18 inches invisible to him in the fight phase, and then all of your core units are plus one strength, attack, AP, and damage. Strength, AP, and damage, yeah. And they're stockable. Yeah, you can do two or three on one target, and that plus three strength, AP, and damage is a hell of a buff to be able to throw down on something, to the point where you don't even need three to point at one target. Three point at one target, like... Some flesh hounds rip terminators to shreds. Yeah, like the seventy right? point flesh hound unit you have just goes on a stupid suicidal mission. Fifteen attacks, ten hits, strength seven, no strength eight, AP four, four damage. That's what they're pumping. Yep, and you're just like ten hits. Bye. <laughs> good, good night. Blood letters do ridiculous stuff. If you combine this with an extra attack off Scarbrand, like legitimately five flesh hounds with Scarbrand buff are a legitimate threat to. 
anything. And it, you know, it goes crazier because if you have two or three of these things, you don't have to damage four. You know, you can damage four, but you can also flesh hands here are two damage. Bold letters here are three damage. DM print sweeping up to two damage. Gone, gone, gone. Yep, plus one damage is a pretty gross buff. And the fact that when something is really annoying to kill, guess what? You take your strength like eight, AP zero, damage one. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. It's strength 10, AP two, damage three. And then we're going to spend a CP to make it 10, three, three. So this sweep attack that was eight, zero, one is now 10, three, three, die. The only bad thing about this is his base size is annoying as hell to play with. It's big, and getting him to actually get line of sight in within 18 inches of your targets is, can be challenging, and getting him into combat can be challenging. I mean, block is real with your giant demon bases, but that's not a real problem. The man has to just get within 18 inches and see you. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's a doable feat. It's, it's, <laughs> it's doable. It's the definitely damage, doable. The damage ceiling on corn lists is the, is the sun, right? There yeah. just isn't one. When you can just be plus three strength, AP, and damage to any target you want, you're five damage blood letters running into combat with plus one attack, plus one to hit, Reroll ones to wound. Everything plus back. one to wound. You just run into combat with wraiths, and the wraiths go. Whew. Yeah, like it's uh, ridiculous. Especially in like a team format, if you want, if your team is like, I don't know, I don't have a good answer for the super tough Necrons, the super tough Custodies, whatever it might be. You can just tailor a demon list to just end the world. Yeah, you're just like beep beep beep. Yeah, and the best part about it is if you happen to pair into a list that does not have shooting, which exists, yeah, you just get to use them every turn of the game, and the game yeah. ends just really fast. Keep the red master safe and just murder everything with five man flesh hounds. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gross. Like seventy point units killing like anything. Six exalted eight bound. It's <laughs> not okay. <laughs> it's it's bad, man. Yeah. Um, also, if they kill a uh, if they kill a monster or character, they heal d six wounds, which is very funny. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, maybe hard to set up, but if it happens, that's awesome. You yeah. roll six on that thing, then pass a battle shock all the way from one to nine. <laughs> Zinth twenty five with a ten dollars super chat. We know the mono corn list now, but is there any value in trying to put some zine shooting in that list with Lord Change, or just stick to stacking skulls for the throne? I don't hate splashing the specific Lord Change Zinth. The Lord Change with the Everstab can open up rhinos for you at range, which means you you know transports in general are a challenging problem for combat armies, especially combat armies like demons that don't have the the quantity of infantry to necessarily kill the rhino, get around the rhino, wrap the rhino, get to the guys that fall out. It's a little challenging with bloodthirsters and scar brands, but with the Lord Change shooting that thing, clearing screens in the shooting phase so you can then deep strike in, it's got some legs for sure. It's a points thing, is your real consideration. Yeah. Tyler also points something out about this buff that's very relevant in this current meta, which is that you run into a Catan, and you're like, I'm damage one or damage two. Anyway, that halves to damage one, and then plus three, and yeah. you're dead. You definitely have before you add three damage to your unit, or even against minus one damage. If it's your charging in, it's your turn, I'm going to apply your minus one first, then I'm going to add three. Uh, minus one and the add three don't. It, they cancel out. Scratch that from the record. Yes. They, <laughs> it doesn't matter whose turn it is. If there's minus one, plus one, they, they cancel out. Pop, pop. Okay. So this guy makes the corn happen. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, he's, he's great. Um, he's super great. We've got Fiends of Slanish, which is a unit which has come down a lot in cost. It started at like 150 for three and it's down to like 120 for three. Still overpriced, unfortunately, but they actually have some legs, six of them. Um, they are toughness five, they're five up in Boulder, four wounds, so it's like decently hard to kill. If you fall back from them, you have to take a desperate escape, which can get annoying. You can die doing that. If you're not falling back, you're not shooting, that's good. And they don't suck at close combat. They have two damage attacks with dev wounds, they have five attacks each. That's not nothing. Yeah, they're definitely paying for the sins of being broken right at the end of ninth edition. They also move 14 and they are beasts. And they're OC2, so at the worst, you can use them as an expensive objective contester, um, which I don't think they're great at. But they can also deal damage to the lower tough targets of the game. They can like add up against the toughness 9 tank. They don't force desperate escapes. What do they work, then? If, they, if you take a desperate escape from them, it's you're minus one. one. Well, as if you a, fail that battle shock <laughs> and then you fall back, you have to take the desperate escape. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, a little more work is all they need, and then they'd be a good unit. I think they are... I don't think they're an abomination of chaos. They're better than these things. Are they? Yeah, they do things. 
I, 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 I suppose they fall into the same slop of denizen of the warp of like, well, I can pay 75 points for yeah. this, or I can pay 80 points, you, or I can even splurge and spend 120 yeah, points. This is the 120 version, but it tries to do damage. Yeah, it just I don't know. It has a 5 up at toughness, 5 with 4 wounds, and 3 6 of them at 240 and, don't do any damage. Alright, this is an abomination. It's, do, do, do better. It's very expensive, and it like thinks it's going to do something, and then it just doesn't. If this was like a... 90 to 100 point unit, I think it would be a denizen, but it's just 120. I think 30 points would be kind of, would be really good yeah. for this unit. Yeah, I think 30, that's 30 the might points. be valued servant, that's fair. Yeah, um, 30, 30 might be a little bit too good, to be honest with you. One of the problems with demon units is they are largely just stats, so like you can very quickly underprice them into just spam them and overprice them into never take them. Yes. It's hard to, it's, it's hard to apply the synergies, because as you're seeing, it's all battle shock based. I think 105 might be the point where they step up a tier or yeah. two. 105, and I think they're a quality denizen of the warp. Yeah. Yeah. You know who's not a denizen of the warp, though? Who's not a denizen of the warp? Epidemius. Yeah, does he do He can join anything? the Plague Bear units, and he can give them a 4 plus and vulnerable save. And if all of the Nurgling models in your army add together to kill seven enemy models in their army, you get a Which with point. Nurgle is tough. Yeah, but that's actually a real challenge with your Nurgle list. Um, you'll get a command point. Um, and remember how we take play bears because they're cheap and sit around on the objective? What if they had to march forward and start killing things? What if what if they had a four up invul and it didn't matter and then they weren't cheap anymore? This guy is banished. He's eighty points. He's it's not ideal. He's he's going over. I'll there. be I'll be a hundred with he's you. Got a pile of Nurgle stuff and a skull during the banish zone. Yeah, the, he makes them a little more durable. But that doesn't help their role at all. <laughs> and then his other ability might as well not exist. You know who might want to exist, though? The Fluxmaster, one of my favorites. Something I also want to note is his oh, yeah. ability doesn't reduce by seven. It just goes to zero. So if you have managed to pull off the ultimate turn where you kill ten models... Then you, you, just, you have to do it again next turn. You have to do it again next turn. Yeah. <laughs> you so every seven you three kill, you've got a command point. It's, it's checked in the turn and resets. Yeah. Um, so we've got the Flux Master. He's a 60 point character who can join Horrors and give them minus one to hit, which is not useless because, again, you're trying to make use of that split value. So anything that slows down the rate of death actually has a lot of value there. Um, he's also got a cool ability and a decent gun. It's the same gun as the Flux Master. Or the Fate Skimmer, rather, but it's six, three shots, strain six, AP two, and D three damage. Nothing to ride home about. It's got dead wounds. Once per battle round, you can turn a hit, wound, or save for this model or this model's unit into a six, so you can guarantee devastating wounds at range of your opponent. Three of them <laughs> is 180 points for a minimum of three D three dead wounds, often four D three damage into your opponent, and it's three models that fly twelve inches, screen action, you know, all the things that the blue scribes and the exalted all of this pile of stuff, it's just another unit that's on the cheaper end that can do all those things. Why don't I take these things? Assassinate. Yeah, no, it's it's because when you take one, you're taking you're doing this three Concept, this three flux master concept thing. Yeah. You fly them around, they are, they only do damage by committee, where the three yeah. of them point at a target and wound it. They don't kill it, no, they no. wound it. It's, it's like three of these look at a tank, and now it's like down to three to four wounds, and then like the Lord of Change will finish it. Yes. But then all of them will die because they are so fragile. It's a little bit of like, can you put them in a spot where your opponent can't retaliate to them? They often deep strike or like move around 12 inches and wait for a good spot to go. If you just line them up in midfield, they, they will. I, I have watched you play this unit multiple times. And every time you're like, all right, all I need to do is find the perfect position to put them in. And then we'll be fine. We'll be fine. And then two things happen. One of two things. Either you determine the perfect position does not exist, and so they don't do <laughs> anything, or, more sillily, you spend like 20 minutes staring at the board trying to figure out a 13-step plan to keep your hyper-fragile little character alive <laughs> while also being within 18 of a target that you want to kill. And then what happens is two of them die anyway because, oops-a-daisy, something slipped through screen and bye. And then, and then you lose by four because assassinate. <laughs> I like them. I like them a lot. <laughs> they could be abominations. I've never though. watched them be awesome. I've only watched one of those two things happen. I've watched them kill an armager and live to tell the tale. 
Yeah. Was that armature at two wounds? No, it was like less than less than twelve though. More than two, less than twelve. There's a spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the spectrum of banished to blessed by chaos, we've got the Inferno and Rapturous. She sucks. What does she do? She has an assault harp, which means that her and her unit can advance in action because we need more of that in demons. She's got an assault harp. An assault harp. <laughs> the assault harp has a decent profile. We need to regulate assault harps. <laughs> it's strength nine. It's like an amount of damage. It's AP two. It's one shot. That part's bad. It's three to three. She heals D three demonets in your command phase because demonets are the type of unit that get chipped away slowly. Definitely not a type of unit that just gets clapped out of existence. And she gives up one of those beautiful assassinate points that we love so 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 yeah, much. She's not. She's good. banished. Into, she's horrible. Yeah. Please make her better. So here's the thing, right? A lot of these demon units are based around surviving in front of your opponent, but not doing anything while you're there. Forty K is not played that way. If you're in front of your opponent and you just let them tee off on you for a couple turns, you're dead. It doesn't matter Demons what rules you have. Charge in, kill something, maybe, and die. They stand behind a wall doing nothing until then. At no point are you healing D3 demonets. Yeah, even even like Necrons, the poster child of you can't kill me. Even they need Nightbringer, they need the Silent King, Doomstalkers, shooting, stuff to back it up. Otherwise, your opponent is just going to hit you until eventually you collapse. You don't want that. Demons are less durable than that by a decent amount. Yeah. And if you just let your opponent hit you, you will fall over. Eventually. So, corn stuff likes to hit people, and Karanak is a corn guy, and of course, with all corn guys, you could theoretically do the corn combo to make him hit stupid hard, but at some point, you can't do the corn co combo on everybody. I mean, you have three. You have three. The, you have more, than the, three the other, more than three units in your army list. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Karanak can join Flesh Hounds and then pick a unit to be his prey at the start of the game, and then you get lethal hits against that unit, which is a little too telegraphed for my taste. You'd literally tell your opponent. If they have like one specific big unit, you're going to charge it anyway, sure, but otherwise, not really relevant. He's not that great in combat himself, and he's 65 points, which is like the cost of a Flesh Hound unit. So, for those reasons, I think it kind of sucks. Yeah. It's not great. I don't want to ever give up the assassinate points by taking Karanak. I think he, he needs a little bit more oomph for me to ever really consider him. Yeah. He doesn't suck suck, though. He's not like a Skulter where it's comical. Are we, yeah, are we putting this in the same tier as the... I, th I think he's by the Skull Master. He's, okay. He's around there. Fair enough. Because, like, the Infernal and Rapturous literally doesn't do a goddamn no, like, thing. Like, the Karnak tries to do something, isn't great at it, and gives up Assassinate. She is worthless and gives up Assassinate. Yeah, she heals yeah. D... She's worth D3 Demonettes a turn if the unit is wounded but not dead. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> like, who cares? Um... The mask is someone who cares. She's really interesting. In, in a Slanesh list, she can uh, do the plus one to mine, plus one to wound for me, minus one to wound for you, which is really nice on my buckets of strength four attacks and toughness three models. She's really nice with the big monsters because like minus one to wound on a keeper in close combat is like uh, you're not taking damage, and then plus one to wound turns that strength six and strength eight spectrum into actually wounding things. She's alone up, which is also great. That is nice. Um, she can advance and charge, advance and fall back, but if she does get attacked, she's as fragile as you'd expect her to be, so you have to be very careful with her. I think in a Slanesh heavy list, she's good, and like any other place, she will be a redundant character that I'm not going to take. So I think she kind of falls into this Blue Scribes, Exalted Flamer area. Totally fine, yeah. Yeah, she's, she's a denizen. Probably a denizen that doesn't make it too often to the party, but she's a denizen. Somebody maybe not a denizen, though, is a spoil pox scrivener. Do you know what he does? Oh, no, this is, this is the Pox Bringer. I'm sorry if you couldn't tell. My, my mistake. Spoil Pox Scrivener already in Banished. You banished him so hard you forgot about him. What is this dude? This guy can join your play bears for the new cost of, I believe, 70 points. Maybe 65 even. And you know he, what he does for you, Jack? Oh, this is going to be bad. He does a couple things. He is going to give you critical fives, and, and that means you have lethal hits on fives now for your AP 1-1 one, one damage attacks. But if you're Neuroticus, it's... Damage two, and if you're spending CP, it's AP two. So, at that point, you could like try to do damage. This juice is not worth the squeeze, my man. Like two attacks a model. <laughs> hit on they fours. hit on fours. Hit on <laughs> Come on, what are we doing? Um, he also has another ability: enemy units within six inches are minus one leadership for all of the battle shocks you're trying to cause. All right, 
This Nurgle has the problem here of trying to layer offensive buffs on like the worst stat line possible, right? He, two attacks hitting on fours at I, I don't even care something AP one damage one or whatever is not where we want our offensive buffs to go because they are just wasted. Like they could be reroll hits wounds plus one damage, and at that point I would still be like, yeah, they don't hit that hard. But we're not doing that. We're adding like crit five, so they kind of do a little bit of damage, and Rodigus makes them damage two if it's Sunday. And it's just, it's not worth going through all that effort to make plague bearers yeah. hit <sighs> like demonettes. Like, I don't, I, like, what are we doing? <laughs> the, uh, yeah, like you can attach a character to a plague bearer to make it like comparable to a blood letter before you give it 50 buffs. And giving the blood letters 50 buffs is why we're putting them in the good category. That's right. And sorry, plague bears hit on threes. They, they do hit the on chat. threes. The chat is correcting us. Thank you so much, chat. Apologies for getting that wrong. But but I don't think that moves the needle at all. It doesn't make the crit fives any better. The, uh, the plague bears are not a data sheet you take to do damage. You just I don't care that the, you can pretend that they do. It, yep. it doesn't matter to me. We're, be banished. They're not a data sheet that does that tries to do damage, and all of the data sheets that try to make them do damage are bad because of that. Yeah. Then we've got the Transweaver. The Transweaver is yet another demon character. This is the one that joins Demonettes. She is like two Demonettes glued together in terms of damage. She's got damage two. What she does for them nicely, you're going to love this. It's two rules, Jack. One is always strikes first, which is actually a good rule. Don't hate that. Um, you need to do damage, need, so yeah. let's... And Demonettes, like, I found through using Demonettes is that, like, people disrespect the crap out of them. Like, Quentin charged me with five Mandrakes and just killed them all. And I was like, damn it, stupid Demonettes. But if I've always strikes first thing, I kill the Mandrakes. Yeah, the Bolters mop you up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So if you're behind walls, though, your Demonettes are actually going to get to do stuff. And then what's the second rule? This is the money. This is the money. At the start of your, no, at the end of your movement phase, as the demon player, you can pick an enemy unit within 12 inches invisible to her. So, like, you move up, you're, you're about to charge, you pick an enemy unit. If that unit is battle shocked, you can pick it. You can't actually pick it if they're not battle shocked. And then your unit gets re rollings against it later on in the fight phase. When do you pick this? You pick it at the end of your moon phase, you can pick a battle shocked enemy unit. How did you battle shock an enemy unit by the end of your moon phase? Well, surely your sloppy bile piper triggered a battle shock that they failed it during their previous Isn't fight that, phase. Wait, that's hold on, that's in the fight phase. So they have to No the previous fight phase. So you previous guy. So, so they're gonna charge their blood angel mans into your your plague bearers or something near the plague bearers, not kill it. Take the battle shock at the start of the fight phase, actually, so they could kill it. Take the battle shock, fail the battle shock, retain battle shock through your movement phase, and then, then we're going to reroll wounds as a counter strike. But if they pass the battle shock, Sloppity Bile Piper and your Transweaver aren't going to get to use their rules for anything. Yeah, battle shock synergies are not very good generally, and this is, this. yep, no, it certainly is a sub. It's a theme in demons that we're going to try and battle shock our opponent, and it's consistently bad in basically every army. The only army where it's like decent is Tyranids because they can force an unholy amount of battle shocks, and they have decent shooting to back it up. So she's 55 points, which is cheap, and always strikes first is a good rule. Her battle shock rule is so offensive to me, though, that I, I want to make her an abomination. Go for it. Yeah. I'm not I'm not sad about it. Like she's fight first on a unit that's like what three attacks at 411 is not getting me excited. And dev wounds, but yes. Yeah. With real wounds, the dev wounds is real. But if it's a Tuesday and, you know, it's, it's Saturn not, is Tuesday ascendant. happens one in seven days, Jack. It's not Tuesday. It's and like a leap year, February 29th, you get to lose this rule. <laughs> if it's February 29th, <laughs> then your opponent will know. <laughs> so then we've got six blood crushers or three blood crushers, a corn mainstay. I've tried this unit pretty extensively. I've tried it in a corn heavy list and I've tried it in a not corn heavy list. I think in a non corn heavy list, it's, it's really kind of bad. It's like oh a, yeah, big time. Um, like I mean, like if you splash our run master and splash six blood crushers, like the run master will black, buff the crushers, and I have a hard hitting thing. It's too many moving puzzle pieces for not enough built in synergy. It's just kind of like you're jamming this this component into your army. It's not that good. In a corn heavy list, they're like an auto take. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I, and I'm not saying you need to run 18. I think like six to 12 anywhere in that range is a good healthy number. They are unwieldy. Their bases are obnoxious to use and move around to wheel around terrain. Far from unkillable, and without charged mortals, 
they largely get tied up in close combat because they have a low quantity of tax and their basis once again means that only a couple models ever get to swing unless you're the one manipulating the charge. But they do have the profile to absolutely shatter people's spines with the Red Master buff. Yeah. And like they are the thing where you're like, ah, I can no longer kill my opponent with five flesh hounds. Yeah. It is now time to destroy them. But also in the context of the corn army, bloodletters can do that job. Scarbrand exists. They, you're they, probably they, taking a bloodthirster, and you're probably taking the winged demon prince. So it's not like you're you're shy of heavy hitters. This is like a another version of a heavy hitter. It it is. It also has decent board presence. It does. It has decent board presence. It can hold. It can actually hold territory for a decent amount of time. Mm -hmm. And they're OC two. They are OC two. So I definitely like having at least some amount in your corn list. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the the three man units that they, hit, they I actually like three man crushers a lot. The six man obviously will like end the worlds with the Ren masters and whatnot. But the three man is kind of cheap. It's fairly good OC. It's fairly tough to kill. And if you're willing to buff it, it will hit as hard as you need it to. Yeah. So I think I think in mono corn they are valued serve and on a list they're like a denizen of the warp. But in the context of corn, I'm willing to put them over there. Yeah, I think they're pretty decent. Yeah. So play drones. Um, these are tough. They're toughness eight. They're five wounds. They're five and one. They fly. They are flies. <laughs> what else? Are you sure they don't just have the flies keyword? They have the flies keyword. It's slightly different from fly singular. Um, but they also have some rules. You'll like this. They help buff Nurgle damage. If they shoot you with the Death's Heads, which is a mediocre shooting attack. I'm not going to like this. I can see will, the future. The, the, don't, the, we're not going to go over the Death Head profile because... It, you know, might as well say zero damage, zero strength, zero AP. Cool. But if they shoot you and they hit you with it, which they have a ballistic skill, all of your Nurgle Demon units are going to reroll wounds in close combat against the target. Wow, which, we can get really, really close to an unbuffed squad of Bloodletters. Look, as hard as you try, you cannot make two attacks better than two attacks doing this. Like, you can, as I said, like you can get really close to unbuffed bloodletters if you stack 700 points of models to make it happen. I've even tried using a unit to play drones to make my great unclean one who's strength 8 reroll wounds, and I'm like, this do I actually care about that buff? And let me tell you, you don't want to add a 120 point add-on to your great unclean one. That's not good. The point is he's 260, not 380. And then when you use them to be Oh, incendiary value, they're moved, they're tough, they, they contest an objective, they deal an action. They fit into this category of everything else in your codex. Yep, and they're 120 points, right? They're 120 said? points. I don't love that. I don't love that. I don't love that either. I Honestly, I, I kind of feel like they belong here and all three of these belong coming down. Then do it. Let's do you, it. You control it. You these, control this fate. These are bad units. These are bad units that don't do enough things. You but can convince yourself like, ah, oh, they're fine, they're not fine. They, they have synergies, they have jobs to do, they're bad at all of it. I've tried them, I promise. Um, so we're ridiculous Slimex though. He's an Nurgle man who doesn't suck. He's a Nurgle man who's kind of tough to kill, he's toughness nine, he's four up in vol. He's, or he, might, he might not be toughness nine, he's four up in vol, and he's nine wounds, and he's got good attacks and close combat, mulch, is this name of his slug, and we like that. And the reason you take him is because he walks into terrain and then just turns that terrain feature into Shadows of Chaos, which is an important rule for making your army function. It, it's pretty funny. What, like, what does he do anything other than seed the Garden of Nurgle? No. He no. just has to be within. He doesn't have to be holding yeah, within, he, so he, he can just be towing. He can t actually, in many formats, have terrain near each other. His base is quite long. He can probably tow two pieces of terrain in one turn. And then you're like, Mayfield is kind of shadowsy now, and that is really nice. He is definitely more viable if you're not running Bellacor. Um, and Bellacor, for as much as we put it in Blessed by Chaos, there are many demon lists that don't run Bellacor because the dude is not unique in close combat. For his cost. And you're going to need to run some degree of shadow support without Bellicor. Otherwise, you're just playing demons without rules. I've tried it. Demons need some rules because their data sheets aren't it. So he's a good side alt build choice if you don't want to run Bellicor. Aside from that, you're not really running him. I think he's like a denizen, I guess. Uh, he's, he's okay. You feel, you feel, where, where do you want to put him? I trust wherever you want to put him. Uh, he, he, I like his rule. Seed the Garden Wriggle is actually quite an impactful rule for demons. I'm going to put right. him there for Seed the Garden. He gets denizenized. You're not going to take him in Bellacor because that is 470 points to turn on your army faction rule, which is essentially plus one leadership and deep strike slightly better. 
Deep Strike a lot better. Deep Strike a lot better. But, but you know. And, yeah, uh, yeah people in chat are correct. He has toughness 10 with He's 10 toughness wounds. toughness 10 with 10 wounds. Man's even tougher to kill. Yeah, he's definitely a dentist. And lock him on objective and be, like, actually challenging the room. Still only OC2, so, like, you know, probably just get contested. But, you know, he's... He's he joined tough. Beasts? Then you're making another Nurgle unit that's expensive that doesn't do anything. I've tried that. Doesn't do my thing. <laughs> but if you do enough nothing, Nick, you will get through to the no, other side no. and do something, I'm I, sure. Do you know it's, how many times I've tried that? It's the meme of the guy mining for diamonds, and he's almost there. You're just turning around now. Why are you doing that? We are almost there. We have five data sheets left. We have the Torment Bringer on Exalted Chariot. So this is the exact same thing as the other one, defense and offense-wise. The thing it does is it gives sustained hits to all your Slenish stuff within six inches, which I think is a worthwhile buff if you're taking a Slenish themed army. God, see, so the thing about themed armies is that they're just not worth it unless it's corn. <laughs> That's There's just... better themes to go for than Slenish. Um, yeah, 140 and assassinate. You would run this in a Slenish army, but you're probably not running a Slenish army. Um, yeah. So the way that demons are incentivized to play is you either go all corn because yes, they have a buff that is good enough that you can make a corn army, mono corn army, and it's good. Cool. Or you just take good stuff, right? Because if you take synergistic stuff, it doesn't line up. You're trying to buff data sheets that are just uh, uh, not where it's at. So you end up with like, oh, wow, these demonettes hit a lot harder than demonettes. But do they hit hard? They hit harder than normal demonettes. Yeah. And you're like, sick, well, that's 2,000 points. Demons have a lot of interesting internal balance choices, but when you get into the, the practical applications of them and then what other armies can do, like external balance, it, it, it's interesting. <laughs> it's, it's an exciting it's, it's decision. It's an exciting <laughs> choice that they've made there. <laughs> Shalaxi is an interesting choice, though. She is one of the hardest, if not the hardest hitting single model in the game. She, when she charges, rerolls, hits, wounds, and damage. She's strength 14, AP 3, D6 plus 2 damage with 6 attacks. And she's got her 4 snapping claw devil wound attacks. She's minus 1 to hit in close combat. She's got a 4 up invul and a feel more pain. She's got a decent gun. She hits. She slams. Is she minus one to hit, or does she make enemies minus one attack? Or oh, both? Oh, maybe that's the rule. She's, there's so many rules. In minus one. You pick an enemy unit in engage range, and they are minus one attacks characteristic. Her which is only, better than minus one to hit. It is. Her only downside is that she is 450 points, and man, is she not angry on. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, she's not angry. Um, she is very annoying to kill. She functionally has 30 wounds with uh, how averages work at toughness 10. That's really annoying to deal with, um, and yeah. she's tough, often tough to deal with in one turn. That final feeling of pain slams. I think she's very good. I think she's very pricey. I don't even know that you'd run her in a Slanesh list, ironically, because she doesn't actually buff Slanesh things, but you like her in mixed lists, especially with Bellicor. She's deliverable at that point, and then she, she clears problems. She makes problems go away. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I think she's at the very least valued servant. I could see an argument for Blessed. I don't, I, she does not make many competitive demon lists these days. So for that reason, I think she's just a valued servant. Fair enough. Um, but you know, it, when she was a little bit cheaper at 450, she was... At 400. 400, she was very good. Uh, the 50 points really... Like, his Bellicor went up 25, and she went up 50, and just taking that combo just went up 75, along with some other stuff, and uh, it was already pretty not enough. Yeah. Speaking of not enough, we've got the change caster. I'll give you a hint. This is a not Nurgle data sheet, which isn't that good. Um, he can join your pink horrors, and much like we tried to make Nurgle data sheets do more damage by adding characters, we can make pink horrors do damage by adding characters. <laughs> Why He's, would we make them like fifty percent more expensive? So here's what he to does: do a little bit of damage. Here's what this man does: He's got a gun. It's strength six, AP two, and D three damage. Yes. You know, you know devil wounds. Yeah. He's got gives your whole unit sustained hits one. You know, for their two strength, four AP, one, one damage attacks. Each. Right, right, yeah. Got it. And what is possibly his best rule, Jack? If you shoot an infantry unit, specifically, with his gun, they have to take a battle shock test. And and also something else? No, but demons. Battle shocks. Brutal wounds. Mm, how many points is he? He is a quality, quality 60 -ish? Yeah, I don't care. It's the... It, Banished with you. It's way too many points to, like, make Pink Heart Literally, hit slightly harder. Who cares? He could say 15-point unit upgrade attachment with the character keyword, and that alone would make me not want him, because screw Assassin. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, like he, he has to cost negative points for me to want to take another character in my list like that. Yeah, or if you, even if you weren't a character, just making the unit sixty, whatever. Who cares? It could be forty. It could be eighty. It's it doesn't not. matter. Like it, it doesn't matter. But like he could make the unit that much more expensive. Like you're paying a two hundred point unit of pink cars that is slightly better at killing sisters of battle. Like what are we doing here? Yeah, that's it's not it. But what is it is Tyler Johansson Jensen's $5 super chat. Question about Slimex. Rules is written. You can use his terrain effect in the same turn he comes down after he comes down for other units deep striking six inches away. Um, I don't see why not that I way. don't believe you can because of how timing works. He deep strikes down. Mm -hmm. It is in the reinforcement step of your movement phase. Mm -hmm. Other people show up at the reinforcement step of your movement phase as well. Oh. His ability triggers end of the movement phase, which means it's after the reinforcement step of your movement phase. Okay, so that for that reason it wouldn't work, but thank you so much, Tyler, for your super chat. Really appreciate your support for this channel. Two more data sheets to go. We've got the contorted epitome. Uh, what was once greatness has now been reduced to not that awesome. She is an OC2 character who can join demonettes. Uh, she, she's basically two demonettes glued together in terms of offense. And then she... She's also damaged too, so it's a little bit better. She also gives your unit, get this, a four up feel of pain from psychic attacks. Wait, what did she do? She four up feel of pain from psychic attacks for your demonettes. Anything else? She is, has an offensive profile. That is not. Yeah. See, she used to be so good. She's she's paying for some sins, but she's paying Games for Workshop might have banished her. <laughs> yeah, she used to be ridiculous. She used to be like, yeah, you couldn't fall back. She used to like used to absorb like, mortal wounds on uh, a two up. She yeah. used to do some ridiculous stuff, but they have no psychic attacks on a four up. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Rodigus cares. Rodigus is not a bad miracle data sheet. Good job. He actually is one of my favorite data sheets in all teams. I've recently started trying him out. He's got a new shiny points cost of 230. He does a lot of things also like Fate Weaver that no one else in your army can do. He's a 6 inch aura. Enemy units within 6 inches are half move and half OC. Which is amazing because you could just slam on an object and be like, this is going to be mine or you kill me. And killing him is super hard. He tandems super nicely with Mr. Chongus himself as a combo because killing both of them is just like ludicrously impossible. Together they are OC10 on an objective. And then once you're half OC, there's no units in the game that are going to be contesting that. So that's just your objective. And Chongus gives him six up female pain. He gives the Chongus plus one damage potentially on that sweep attack, which is nice. He's also got good combat and good shooting. He's got a 2d6 shot, strength 7, AP2, flamer. And he's got 7 attacks, strength 7, AP3, 3 damage, which goes to 4 damage if he buffs himself. That's pretty good. At 230. All that is, work. That is pretty good. And it goes to an enemy unit. So if they are standing together. Yeah, it'll, it'll apply to both of them. Or your nerdlings to kill devilfish. Yeah. That guy, uh, I mean, he's cool. In 230, he is one of the cheapest greater demons, and I don't really... The only bad thing about him is yet another character for bringing down Assassinate, but honestly, he doesn't die. The real bad thing about him is base size. Like, him and Shangas trying to be on the same objective is logistically a challenge. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but you can you can get it off. His, he is so good, he has become quite the auto-take in my demon lists. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's pretty, pretty damn solid. Yeah. And uh, I like that you actually have a guy who can stand there and just kind of say, this I'm actually going to hold mine. This. Yeah. Mine. <laughs> um, but that's demons in a nutshell, folks. They're, they got a weird internal balance where all of your best data sheets are synergistic with each other if they're core, and otherwise they're isolated characters. And you have a myriad of, of medium to low cost trash units which all compete for the same jobs. And then you have a lot of chariots. And a lot of characters who don't do anything, along with some fortifications. Yeah, there's a theme of trying to make units that don't do anything do something badly. <laughs> it just, yeah. It's not worth investing in. Personally, I think Demon's internal balance leaves a lot to be desired. Um, you know, their, their rules are kind of hard to trigger. Their synergies are not quite there. Many of their units leave a lot of room for improvement. But, you know, the Blessed by Chaos against the Valued Servants, they are fun. They are interesting. They are cool units to play with on the table. Yeah, very strong, too. And what I do like about it is the variety of list builds you have. Like, Monocorn or Mostly Corn is a list. You can do a mixed Demon 
demon army with Bellicor. You can do a mixed demon army without Bellicor. And you can do a triple keeper Shalaxy build. You can do a pretty Zine Chevy build. And they're all pretty decent. I've tried a lot of these out on stream. So if you're interested in that, you can check out other YouTube streams on our YouTube channel. I'm actually playing Demons next week live here. And you can check out a lot of other demon content on in the War Room, which the War Room is, of course, available on the warroom.vhx.tv for your three-day free trial where we have all kinds of really awesome content. So remember to subscribe to the channel, like the button, hit the bell for your notifications, and generally just support the channel. Leave a comment, let us know what you think, what if you disagree with our takes on the serials, if you liked it, tell Jack he's wrong for the Black Templars and Fate Weaver is God, is truth, you know, it's just the way it is. <laughs> and, you know, we appreciate your support. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, thank you, everybody, <laughs> and and uh, that is going to be it for us for today. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. -bye.